winter is no longer coming it is officially here and we are officially in the finals welcome everybody to tonight's broadcast the ecl elite finals winter 2022 is here my name is nick DeMeo, aka f5 penguin alongside my very good friend brandon bigsby aka b major and brandon we have i think what they would say a barn burner for you this evening and that might be an understatement, Nick. We have an amazing finals matchup. The third time for Lunda and Hreds meet up yet again. Hreds taking the meeting last season in order to take the crown from Forlunda. Now we get that ever so coveted rubber match. This is going to be a really good one. Can't wait to sit and enjoy this with you guys. That rubber match indeed is coming. I couldn't be more ecstatic to be calling this, or at least hosting this alongside with you. We'll have our amazing, illustrious Hall of Fame award-winning broadcasters, Two Ginson, joining us shortly. But like you said, our social media team took the classic and flipped it into the trilogy. So this isn't the first time these two teams have met each other, let alone at this stage of the finals, right? Yeah, that would be right. Right at the stage. And interestingly enough, it's been the same result, but in contrasting ways for Lunda sweeping Hreds in ECL 11, trying to get that back-to-back -back championship for the first time last season and Hreds denying them of that. Now for Lunda getting the chance to do that same thing that Hreds took away from them. So, so many storylines, so much to look out for, and so much history between these two powerhouse teams. Now let's look at the history let's go back just a little bit to the standings of kind of how we got here uh, to kind of walk ourselves into setting the tone for this evening you look at the standings here what stood out to you for both hreds and for Lunda's road to getting here brandon well, I think for Hres, the big thing is they had competition at that number one spot. It took them to the last day. They were beating Fediestad to get that last spot. Sawo Esports really gave them a run for that number one spot, really switching back and forth between that one and two position throughout most of the season. And for Falunda, usually you would see them in that number two spot battling with Hres for that first coveted spot but this time they were down the three had to play Havu in El Clasico in round one that's not something you would see very often but it just goes to show you how much parity and how much depth there is in the ECL elite this season and both of these two teams managed to get through the gauntlet and get themselves to this point and not only did they do that they did it in style. I think you touched on it there, the parity in the league where you know what some of the top teams are, but sometimes some things might shock you along the way. And speaking of along the way, let's take a look at the bracket, the playoff bracket to kind of tell the tale of how we walked to where we are now. What stood out to you here? Both of these teams getting here the exact same way, a sweep in the quarterfinals and then a serious win in five games in the semis. And it's interesting because for both of these two teams, it might look like the series were a little bit lopsided, but let's not get it twisted at all. Both Hreds and Forlunda were tested in the quarterfinals. Hreds seeing a few overtimes. Havu, they were very close in their games, only lost by a goal in three of those four games. And then the same kind of trend continuing over into the semifinals. Hreds beating Granite, but getting a little bit of pushback after starting that series strong while for Forlunda, Fediestad giving them one of the biggest challenges that we've seen from those two in the many times that they have met in the semifinals matchup. So it might look like they got here into convincing fashion, but do not get it twisted. They were challenged and they are battle tested coming into this finals matchup. Yeah, of course, they're 22-5-3, 25-2-3. It looks like you weren't tested, but you definitely were, uh, despite what that score line or that series line might look like. Let's dive deeper here now into the semifinals results. We'll kind of take a look at that, and you can talk to us a little bit more about that battle tested, especially for age reds. Yeah, and it's so interesting for Hreds because you see in the first two games, they won in shutout fashion. It looked like they were going to run through the Cinderella story, so to speak, in Granite Gaming. But you saw Granite start to push back a little bit after they struggled early on. It felt like the more the series went on, the better they got. And they were really close to pushing this thing to six games. A goal from Villapoika in double overtime put Hreds through in five games. So Granite was starting to get a little bit of pushback. If they were the ones to get that game five, goal you never know what could have happened here in the ECL elite while for Forlunda 
Fediestad giving them a very well challenge, so much so to where Fediestad, they were close to winning a game here and a game there, but just a little bit of aggressiveness, a little too late, and a few leads blown in these two games. So just unfortunate for Fediestad, they weren't able to get through, but for Lunda, able to take care of business and doing what they do so well, which is always staying calm, always staying composed, no matter what the situation is. Yeah, you talk about those little chances that might lead to success, and you look at these score lines here, and despite some of the maybe the blowout scores you might see from a 4 nothing, but Granite and Firestad both knocking at the door, and uh, you know maybe, maybe somewhere down the line, especially in this new type of format we have with the ECL Elite, you might see these teams back in the Final Four again. Yeah, and especially for a team like Granite that had not been in that situation before. Remember, they were a seven seed, beat the two seed in Sawo Esports even to get to this point, while Fetty is that a team that's been to the semifinals a few times, just has not been able to break through to get to that finals matchup. So don't be surprised if we talk about these teams here in a few months' time being in this situation. They have a lot of talent. If they're able to retain and keep improving on their style of play, do not be surprised if maybe, just maybe, we're talking about these two teams in a few months' time. Time. Now, of course, we'll have to table those two teams for now and turn our attention to the featured matchup of tonight, what everybody's been waiting for, H-Reds versus Frolunda. Here's the tale of the tape. How do things break down, Brandon? Man, it's going to be interesting because you always, you kind of know what you expect with these two teams. You're not going to get the high flying, high scoring. It's going to be very methodical and very strategic. And you can see with both of these two teams, they've just been playing that same consistent game that they play so well. They might not blow you out of the water with six or seven goals in style, but they do so well at shutting you down and not allowing their opponent to do what they are comfortable doing. They make you play into their game and they capitalize on your mistakes. These two teams so so good at doing that it's what makes them so fun to watch when they're playing against one another because it's strength versus strength and there's not really weaknesses for these two um, excuse me these two teams to go against one another with so it's gonna be a lot of fun to see because there's not a lot to separate these two yeah, near perfect on both sides of the stat line when it comes to identical nature in terms of their play style and behavior. But what stands out to me, despite the 8-0-1 identical records for each of them in the playoffs, that 100% penalty kill for Ferlunda may come in handy here. Uh, we know they like to play disciplined hockey, but when they do take penalties, they're killing them off perfectly. Exactly, and I think that you can even say the same for the other side in H-Reds, a team that is 76.19% on the PK, but unlike for Lunda, you mentioned them being very disciplined, H-Reds has been known to have that tendency to take a few penalties, so it's going to be a lot of fun to watch that for Lunda power play versus that H-Reds PK. We know H-Reds has that ability to take a few penalties, get in the box a little bit. If for Lunda can take advantage of that, that could be a huge key if they look to win the series. Now let's take a look at the lineups. I think you know these players pretty well here as we get ready here to drop the puck very shortly. Obviously, these are household names. We know all of these players pretty well. Look at them in their amazing jerseys and photos. But uh, run down the lineup here for Frolanda, Brandon. Well, it's the usual suspects you would expect for this for London team. They have the chemistry. They have the star power. Plea maker, Pat Slav, and Eki, the trio of fours that have been the core of this for London team for years now, come out yet again and make another finals appearance, this time with Timu and Loimu on the back end. And the rock-solid star in net, Kape, we know how this guy is able to steal a game, Nick. He has that ability to come in, make 12 to 15 saves, and make it look easy despite whoever he's playing against. That's going to be a lot of fun to watch against an HRS team that is really familiar and has learned how to play against this for London team better and better each time they've matched up. Yeah, those players on the H-Red side of the ice, they they know their opponents quite well, uh, Brandon. And here we see FaZe, who has just meteorically risen through the ranks and far as goalies are concerned. Let's start from the back and line up these players as well. Yeah, FaZe, like you said, remember, he was the playoff MVP in ECL 12 when they swept this for London team last season. A few shutouts in this series, you know he is going to hope to replicate that here to get that back-to-back -back championship. While in front of him, Domi and King of Apes. We know how illustrious that defensive pair has been. They are the staple of this HRS team and how well and how sound they play defensively and with great defense comes great offense. Villapoika, the captain in Benito, and Nikki Dangles 
at the right wing. I know they might not be a team that lights up the score sheet in more games than not, especially against these high-end teams like Ferlanda. It's just not the way that these games play, but they are able to put the puck in the net with the best of anyone. So expect all three of those guys to make a difference. Just a little bit of a different challenge here in the finals and against a team like Ferlanda. And this is just the shallow end of the wave pool here. Let's dive a little bit deeper as we get closer to puck drop. Time to break down these teams. We'll start with the centermen here, Brandon. And you look at these stat lines here and a lot of the play that you see on the ice, you said low scores. Yes, but a lot of the play flows through these two centermen. Yeah, they're kind of the generators and the facilitators for their respective teams. And I know that Patsilov, maybe not the scoring that you would usually expect him to have, but do not get it twisted. He is a key element to this Verlunda offense. The plays that him, Plea, and Aki are able to make, Patsilov is often in the center, no pun intended, of a lot of those plays. He's able to get a little bit of space open for his wingers. Occasionally, he'll make that pass or even take that shot to get that opportunity for his team. He is a guy that is an important an integral piece of Rolanda's offensive success. So it might be a little bit low scoring from him in terms of the stats, but he's going to be huge for this Rolanda team against St. Reds. Now it would be a pregame if we didn't get to talk to some of these players. And I had the privilege just a few minutes ago before we went on air to talk to Benito. And here's what he had to say in lieu of tonight's upcoming matchup. So I'm here with Benito. Now let's get right to it. We're getting ready for the finals tonight. After denying Verlunda their chance to go back to back, you now have a chance to do the same. Is your team a little bit nervous about being the first to go back to back as champions here in the ECL Elite? I wouldn't say that. Uh, we are really confident in our game, and uh, we are here to win and uh, hopefully do it uh, convincingly. Now, convincingly, great point. Last year, last season, you were able to do that convincingly. Obviously, you have the confidence. Is it going to be a little bit of the same, or do you think uh, you might walk into a little bit more competition on the other side of the ice this time? It's tough to say, but uh, I think we, if we play our game, we can uh, sweep them, definitely. Now, what's the key to your success? Obviously, we had a lot of success last time. Is that going to be the same game plan, or are you looking to maybe change it up against a team you know extremely well? Uh, we'll just have to see how it goes, but uh, I think we are. We can do everything. Uh, we can uh, use the point shots to our advantage and uh, score some uh, rebounds as well, and also some nice goals if, if uh, the right place comes. But... Uh, I think we are just uh, very, uh, we can score pretty much in any way we want. So uh, I think that's one of the biggest reasons. And we talk about scoring. King of Apes, obviously an offensive firepower for you from the back. How important is it to get him activated early in the series? It's always really important uh, in, the, in playoff games. Uh, defensemen are in a big role always. And uh, you know, it's uh, always nice to get some goals from uh, from the blue line. And, uh, you know, it's usually in tight games, the uh, uh, goals that are count come from the uh, blue line. So uh, it's really important. Benito, thanks so much for your time. Best of luck tonight. Thank you. Always love hearing from Benito. And as Benito spearheads and captains his side of the ice in those offensive people that he has manning the sides. Let's jump over to the wingers and break these guys down, Brandon. And it's the two most dynamic wing duos in all of EU. Plea and Eki, Villapoika, and Nikki Dangles. I mean, what can be said about these guys? It hasn't been said already. Plea Maker being the guy that is able to come up with those big plays in those big moments. And it's interesting with him because he said in an interview, obviously, at Sports Gamer GG, so much great media content, said that he feels that we have not seen the best of for London yet and that their routine level may have been enough to win them games but for the finals they want to kick things up a little bit so he's going to be a guy that i'm really looking at to kind of lead that charge and on the other end of the spectrum nikki dangles he was a huge piece to that championship team last season for hres it just felt like whenever hres needed a goal nikki dangles was always the guy to provide that for him seven goals ten assists a pretty balanced stat line for him expect to see him a lot expect to see him often when he is cooking really hard to stop this hres forward group
Look at these stat lines, and you see three goals, 12 shots from Eki, and you compare that to not only his wing partner, but the other side of the ice, and that stands out as a little bit of a shortcoming, so look to see maybe Eki get a little bit more activated in this series. Yeah, it's kind of like what we said with Patsilov, only 11 points for Patsilov, only 11 for Eki, but the thing with Eki is that even when he is kind of quiet, he's always a threat out there. If you lax up on him, he's going to make you pay for it in an instant. So Adret's obviously going to take a large account for him. If you don't, it's going to be a bit of a mistake. Even despite that lower point total, he's the guy that can score. He can score often. He is going to make a big difference for, for London in terms of getting on the scoreboard as much as they can. Getting on the scoreboard, scoring early and scoring often, something you can definitely do to have some success on the opposite end of that ice, though, are going to be some defensemen that are looking to slow that down. Let's take a look at the D-men for tonight's matchup, starting first with Forlunda. And the defense so huge in these series. It almost can dictate the way that these games play. Timu and Loimu, two of the best defensemen in the EU. And on the other side, Domi and King of Apes. Likewise, two of the best defensemen in the EU. And something that really strikes me specifically is the point totals. A lot higher for Hreds on the right side than it is for Fralunda on the left. You see Timu with five points, Loimu with seven, while you look at Domi with ten and King of Apes with 10 as well. So the defense a little bit more active on the offensive end for H-Reds. You know how they like to go up in the play, kind of get a few shots on. They'll score a goal every now and then too. As you can see, five goals between them. They'll look out for that because they really like to use all five in the offensive zone. While for Lunda, maybe not as much, but they can make their difference in there as well when needs to be. Yeah, we talked about ben, uh, to Benito about King of Apes getting active, and these are just the playoff numbers, but we know what he can do offensively. On the other side of the ice, we take a look at Loimu, and as you mentioned, him getting in front of shots, making sure they're blocking him, moving him forward. He likes to send that vertical-style hockey up the wing side, and uh, luckily for us, I had a chance to talk with Loimu as well. Here's what he had to say coming into tonight's matchup. So I'm here with... Loimu from Frolunda. Now, Loimu, I know you've been here before. Just how excited are you to be back in the finals one more time? Yeah, I'm very excited. We have been here multiple times, and it's always a nice place to come back, and let's hope we win this one. Does it feel different each time you come to the finals, or is it kind of the same every time you walk in? Yeah, I think every every situation is a little bit different, but all, all uh, the atmosphere is quite similar, but always very excited to play these games. Are you more excited, or would you say you're a little bit nervous as well coming into tonight? Nah, not nervous at all. Pretty, I'm pretty used to this, so pretty, pretty excited, but not nervous. What's going to be the key to success to take down number one eight treads going into this matchup? I think we just have to play our own game and trust on that, and not worry worry about that much what the opponents do. Just let us like dictate the pace. And then last but not least, obviously, your your partner, Timu, on the other side of the ice from you. And then you got Kape behind you. Just how important is that defensive core to the success for Ferlunda? Yeah, it's very important. Like, like most of the time, some of the games in finals are like one goal games. So it's very important to have good communication with uh, de my defense partner. And obviously, it help Kape as well with the low danger shots. Loimu, best of luck tonight. Thanks for your time. Thank you. And what he didn't tell you is uh, and he's not shaking in his boots because he has some really nice, breathable uh, leather boots he's wearing that he's very, very happy with. So uh, hopefully that will guide him and glide him to victory on this virtual ice. But they can't do that without stopping some pucks. Two of the best goalies in all of the ECL, specifically in the ECL Elite here face off tonight. Brandon, what stands out to you here? I think it has to be with both of these goalies the way they are able to just take over games more times than not. We saw that goals against total for both of these two teams. We talked about how low they were. Well, look at these two for being the front of the reason that is Kape, one of the best goalies in not just all of EU, but in all of the NHL esports community. He has stepped up huge in the playoffs, potentially a playoff MVP candidate if Rolanda is to win it. 83.3 state percentage, a 1.22 goals against average. He is going to be huge against this HRS team who we know is able to score and have really felt confident.
confident coming in to the series. And on the other end, the reigning playoff MVP in phase. We know how big of a key he was last season when they were able to sweep for Lunda. Well, he's going to have to be key again as for Lunda coming in hungry. They won both games in the regular season. Faye is going to have to step up and step up big. We know how confident h -Rez is in front of him when he is playing well. Got to expect him to be big and make some big-time saves. Absolutely, yes. That is the breakdown of all of our players on the ice. However, we should take things just a step further. Something that makes the ECL so elite for lack of a better pun, is the fact that we have an amazing team that works behind the scenes just tirelessly, creatively, to make a really unique experience for you. I had the pleasure of working with some of those people, and we broke down some of the key plays between these two teams. Let's take a look and rewind. Welcome to The Rewind. I'm F5 Penguin, and the number one NHL eSports analysis segment is back. With Frolunda and H Reds ready to duke it out for a third straight finals, we take a look at the tape from their regular season matchup, and here's what we noticed. The first thing we'll point out is you can't spell offense without defense. A key reason Domi, King of Apes, Loimu, and Timu are on the list of top defensemen in all of Europe isn't because of what they can do on the defensive end, but the addition of what they can contribute on the offensive end of the ice. They are able to expand the offensive playbook in so many ways. It can be some of the simple things, like finding space to pinch in the offensive zone for a one team. Next, you may see a D to D to D one timer in an attempt to open up the shooting lane by getting the defense moving in opposite directions. Then you may see a design face-off play where the defenseman is the focal point, which is a surprise since nearly all set plays involve getting the puck to a forward. And lastly, it's not about shooting. These D-men have great vision. King of Apes fakes the slap shot, draws multiple defenders to try and block the shot, and finds Nicky Dangles for the goal. Now these clips were all H-Reds, but I assure you, all four D-men are capable of such plays, and that's something we should all look out for. Our next key point is called Mind the Gap. The first game of their two-game set had nine goals, and there were some uncharacteristic decisions made by the defenseman. In this first clip, as h -Reds enters the zone, Timu goes for a hit, and it leads to a mini two-on-one, which Cape was fortunately able to save. Now, going for the hit could be the right move, but let's rewind a bit and take a closer look. When Nicky Dangles touches the puck, look at how much distance Timu needs to cover in order to make that hit. With that much space, there is plenty of time to make the pass to Benito, and it leads to a quality scoring chance for h -Reds. Now here, another play, same exact issue. Timu tries to hit King of Apes, misses, and it leads to another rush opportunity for h -Reds. With this much of a gap between them, it gives the puck carrier plenty of time to decide where to skate or where to pass and take a defender out of the play at the same time. Now, of course, I'm not saying never go for a hit. The aggressiveness of these defensemen is what makes them great. If you want to go for the hit, especially as a D-man, I believe the initial gap between them needs to be smaller so the puck carrier will have just a little bit less time to react once they touch the puck. And last but not least, our final point is the constant chess match. And what does that mean? Let's rewind back two seasons ago, where we pointed out in our very first rewind that h -Red's miscues in their blue line defense led to easy entries for Frolunda. Frolunda would take advantage and cruise to win the championship in five games. Now let's go back to last season, and what did we notice? h -Red's were able to clean up their mistakes from their previous matchup with a very strong five-man trap. This really limited Frolunda's chances, and h -Reds were able to get their revenge with a 4-0 final sweep. And now let's look at this season. It was Frolunda's turn to adapt, and what did they do to beat the trap? They added a little bit of dump and chase to their game, and it worked. They didn't do it often, but when they did, most of the time, they either forced a turnover on the forecheck or won the puck outright, which led to some quality chances. This constant chess battle of teams going back and forth is what we love to see as we look to crown our next ECL champion. I'm F5 Penguin, that was The Rewind, and now, let's get back to the studio.
And that was a look at the rewind, which I kind of loved because we got to relive not only a previous rewind and a callback to that, but then also kind of look forward to what we might expect, Brandon, here in the matchup tonight. And I always love looking at that segment because you go from looking at the stats and the numbers are one thing and something that you and me talk about all the time off broadcast, Nick, is how stats, they do kind of tell that story. They provide the context, but they aren't the whole story. It's so different being able to see some of the intricacies and in how these teams play, what worked well, what didn't work well, what these teams could look out for, what they can improve on, something that both for Lunda and Adrets pride themselves on doing, how they can improve, how they can get better, they know how to do that. Some of those keys that you said could be something that we see both of these teams do when it could potentially be the difference between walking home with that championship and going home on the other end of it. Yeah, it's always the intangibles, I think, that really makes teams separate from themselves, especially when you have two that are so evenly matched on paper. It's those things you can't measure on the ice. It's the look to the left or the space between or another Dave Matthews band reference I probably could make here, but I won't. So, you know, you look at those things and you find what makes the difference. And it's those things that really stand out. It's those things that win championships. And uh, for a treads, they're looking to go back to back by doing those things on the ice. Yeah, and it's so interesting that you said that because what's so fun about these types of matchups is that not only do you have that, like you said, with these teams being so similar, but every single one of these players are probably in that top 15, top 20, definitely you're in that top 20 conversation in terms of overall players in Europe. These are the best players. This is like an all-star game, only it's constructed. These guys have chemistry and there is cohesion with each of these two sides. So they know how each other play and not only that, but they know how their opponent plays as well. It's so fun to watch these rewinds because of that. When you consider all of those factors, it's going to be interesting to see how those plays out during the series. Absolutely. And we talk about those intangibles. Let's continue to talk about those intangibles. And uh, I, I think we're ready to bring in some of those intangibles, the things that happen to make these broadcasts that much better. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my honor, esteemed pleasure, and humbled privilege to be joined by Tugi and Sin. Gentlemen, good to be back with you one more time. It is very good to be here. Phenomenal job by you two on the pregame, of course, as always. We happen to look forward to these finals where you guys are able to chip in that much more. Always nice to have F5 with us. And, of course, BMA just done some phenomenal work. And we're not exactly done yet with some of the pregame work that was put in. But very intrigued, obviously, to see how this one's going to go today, son. I mean, yeah, absolutely. It's just, it's it's always a treat to get to work with, you know, more and more talented people each time, especially when the stakes are as high as they are right now, closing out this winter season with the rematch, the trilogy, as we've uh, grown to call it here for Lunda and Hreds. It's, it's going to be a heck of a ride. Sin mentioned the trilogy. I mentioned one more video. We'll throw to that now our last little step along our path before we get ready to kick off this championship series. Omne trium perfectum. It's a timeless Latin phrase that quite literally means everything that comes in threes is perfect. In a movie franchise, it's the trilogy. It's capping off the story at the end. For wrestling fans, they'll know that third rubber match places an end point to break the tie between two combatants who have won a match each. But for this great sport, it's two teams that are once again set to clash in their third finals battle, striving to achieve that same perfection that the Romans once coveted so dearly. What is there to say about H. Reds and Falunda that hasn't been said before? The players by now are household names, their teams chiseled into the Mount Rushmore of greats that have taken the virtual ice. Their accolades speak for themselves. Yet still there is a shroud of mystery, an intrigue, seeing these two rivals face off as if you, the fans at home, are chanting for one more time, hoping to see something new astound your eyes. The flashy moves may not be top of mind, but they always find a way to fit a move or two into their quest for that cherished trophy. One team aims to be the first to win back-to-back -back titles, have done it. and the other 
looks to take down the defending champs and reclaim their seat on the throne. Philadelphia, back on top of the mountain. But both know one thing is for certain. Four more wins separate them from repeated glory, etches their names into the history books, and caps off the season with pride and a bit of bragging rights. So let's finally order up this third series between these Goliaths, shall we? Because our rubber match, our trilogy, is this series. And this is the ECL Elite. All right, Sin, with that, we are just a few moments away from puck drop. Game number one of this best of seven series. We are finally here, and the time has finally arrived. Again, as you are all well aware of at this point, the third straight final between these two teams. Sin, we see what these teams are playing for. You win this series, you're not just walking away with 6,000 euros as a team. You automatically secure your spot in the grand final later on this season where there is another 10,000 euros at stake. I mean, yeah, again, when, when, when we when went to this new format, not only was I, you know, immensely excited for just, you know, with the possibilities of that were and kind of having, you know, one more prolonged scene. It's just, I mean, it's, I mean, it's gotta be amazing for the players as well to, to really feel like, you know, everything that you do matters season to season, it all kind of carries over everything uh, really sort of ties into each other. And yeah, uh, it's, it's the road to the grand final, not an easy one, but it starts right here for these two teams. The next chapter this, to this story is about ready to begin again. Game number one for Lunda HC and HREDS. HREDS looking to become the first team to ever win back-to-back -back elite titles. The action is underway. Again, the ECL Elite Division Finals here in our winter season for ECL 22. The action again brought to you by our friends at Wilhelm Kovan Lakritzi and ST Hockey. Let's see how this plays out in an early chance. Broken up, great stick work there by Loimu to take that away. Of course, it is Hreds in their home red. Here is the opportunity on the far side post. Playmaker just not able to hold that. You would have seen the golden helmet for Playmaker, again, signifying the team's leading score. We have an offside early on here, Sin, and we might see quite a few of them here today. Of course, there was all that talk in the pregame about how important the battle of the blue line has been with these two teams in the past. Definitely, and I was, you know, maybe a bit surprised to see some of those early chances coming through for either side. Villapoika on one end, getting an in tight shot, and then it was a pass attempt on the other to Patsloff, who was driving the crease right there. Neither one, neither one really connected on it, but that, you know, some scary uh, moments early on for both of these teams. Absolutely, here in the attacking zone. Now, let's see if Atreds can get anything going. Doing me able to keep that one in now. Nikki Dangles around the back. They went for the wraparound. Nervous moment there. For Cape, he is able to cover. Looked a little bit more dangerous than it was. Yeah, it definitely is. Uh, Villapoika there on the wraparound. He's had a couple couple looks early on, so it's good to see that the leading score from the regular season so far in the beginning of the series for Hreds is feeling it. And a chance again off the faceoff. We know Hreds love those set plays. Going down the other way. Here comes Frolunda. Playmaker tries to throw one on. Picked off by Nicky Dangles. His follow-up pass a little bit off the mark. Rolunda will look to recover. Again, a little bit later on as well and throughout the broadcast, not only today and tomorrow, we'll be unveiling the award winners for this season as well, who will be named Rookie of the Year and illustrious history to that award. Top four defender and goaltender as we celebrate the season that was, as well as finding out, of course, who is going to be crowned champion here in our winter season. See puck over the blue line and a trip there. Eki goes down and a power play for Olunda. We'll get the first opportunity and Sin, crucially enough, it is Domi and we know he's had penalty trouble in the past. Yeah, Atreds getting into some some penalty trouble early on and it's uh, one of the more usual suspects in Domi and that's, you know, bad for Atreds. Not only is he, you know, an incredibly solid defenseman, but they, yeah, they, they go on, to the, on the penalty kill against one of the best power play teams. Zeki's pass off the mark. Nikki Dangles able to send that one out. Nearly freed up the man down the wing. 
for Lunda. In the regular season, the second best power play in the league. A little bit different circumstances here, but the lights shining as bright as they possibly can. Playmaker tries to go back to the point. Loose puck nearly chopped out. Kept in by Loimu. Pinches in. Eki for Playmaker. Stuck on the back end. Back to the point. That's blocked by Villapoika. He's able to clear the zone, and he'll cut back. Defense first for one of the men considered the favorites for that previously aforementioned top forward award. He was the leading scorer in the regular season. It's Playmaker. Throws one in front. Potsloff nearly got a piece of it. Eki down in the corner, ships it down low. We are back to five on five as Playmaker puts it back to the point. Tamu shot and a stop there by FaZe. Nervous moments for H Red sent on that PK early on, but job well done. Definitely there. There's some looks there that for Lunda uh, we're looking for, perhaps a bit too specific at times. But nonetheless, as they got an early uh, chance down low for H Reds in response here, looking to get some pushback. A nervous moment there for Cape, having to try to go butterfly. Turnover here. Space and all alone. He scores! Picking the corner. Who else would it be? Villa Poika scores the opening goal here in this series. And that's a big one right there. We were mentioning him a, a little bit earlier on and how hungry he looked. Two chances, one in tight, one on the wrap. He gets another one right there, able to get behind the defense with the puck one-on-one -on -one situation with Cape, and he buries it on that glove hand side. Hred jumping out to the early one nothing lead. 47 goals in the regular season. Only had six in the first nine playoff games. Villapoika steps up when it matters the most. Opening strike belongs to Hred's. And we'll see how Fralunda respond, of course, dating back to last season's final. Hreds have won four straight games on this stage against Fralunda, and the pressure is on early. Here's Villapoika one more time. Still has the puck down low, taken away by Potsloff. Potsloff drops off for Eki. A lot of passes here as Fralunda trying to make their way through the neutral zone. Tamu stepping up as well. Not able to hold on to it. Potsloff, loose puck. It's Fralunda. Trying to lock down a little bit more offensive zone time. Eki around the back went for that big pass in front to Potsloff. Never got to him. A bit of defense there by Loima to shut it down. Three and a half minutes to go here in the first period. As Eki along the wall. See what he can do. Drops back for Loimu. Dangerous moment there. And here come eight reds down the other way. Villapoika, loose puck in the slot. Bounces out to the boards after the poke check. Is Eki trying to walk through... A little bit of traffic. Hred's again able to force that turnover. Nikki Dangle's nowhere to go. For Lunda back in control, but for how long? A lot of quick possessions for both of these two teams here. In the closing stages of this first period, Eki in front. Playmaker has it. Tries to get it back to Eki. He's contested. Ends up losing it to Nikki Dangles. 20 seconds. Of course, it's a fast final minute. Benito's pass intercepted. Still bouncing around. Potsloff at least going to carry it out of the zone. Do they have time for one more scoring opportunity? The answer is no. The opening 20 minutes belongs to Hred's 1-0 sin after this goal here from Villapoika. And it was just a very beautiful goal, just something that, you know, for Linda's going to have to be careful of those turnovers sort of as they're, you know, trying to exit their zone. Uh, it happened right there and probably went under the stick of the worst uh, possible person for for Linda in Villa Poica. As you mentioned, the leading scorer in the regular season with 47 goals, not just his first one here of the winter finals. And that is a difference maker so far, but. It, you know, stats wise, like eye test wise, it hasn't really been a, a too much of a glaring difference, too much of a huge advantage for either of these teams. I still like that for Lunda is able to gain the zone. We're not seeing an enormous wall, at least early on from Atreids, as we saw last year consistently in the finals between these two teams. That's got to be good for for Lunda. But now they're in the situation where they may have to play into into Atreids, and you know they have the lead, they have the advantage, and that could be some the, the most dangerous situation to find yourself in when you have to try to stretch your own game out against a treads with how good their defense is how good that transition is and how much they can punish you for mistakes not a situation that you want to be in there is plenty of time left so before you know for has to stretch that game out i think we're going to see a bit more of the same from them and what they're comfortable with second period underway the turnover from domi there will send for down the other way but a 
mistimed play there. I think Playmaker expected the pass. You see Loima as well sitting on screen dealing with an injury. Always dangerous for any defender, especially if it's going to slow you down. Yeah, absolutely. If that's that, if it's that lower body injury, I mean, you have to be even more careful about your positioning more so than you than you usually are against a forward uh, pairing uh, like uh, Villa Poika and Nikki Dangles, just so so deadly with their sticks and on those counter attacks. Just pots off a little bit of space, sauces it across, loose puck bouncing around, and Benito has to play it safe and clear that one out. London again trying to get something going. Potsloff, Eki, plea maker, bumped off the puck. Great job on the back check from H Reds. Of course, those three forwards all more than willing to get back and help out the defense. It's an incredible team defense. Again, it led H Reds to being our number one team in the regular season. D to D work here. Domi gets it back and again down low into the corner. Red well, but it's H Reds still in control and an interesting bounce there will force them to reset. A lot of active sticks in the defensive end right there for Forlunda, constantly poking at the puck, constantly making their presence felt, not allowing Atreds the time and space to get comfortable with their down low cycle. So yeah, a loose puck over to the corner, Atreds able to recover that one, having a little bit of trouble gaining the puck. Consistently are both of these two teams, Temu offside here again, nearly halfway already through the second period, and as a result, this game... And Sin, I mean, right now, the you mentioned it, you know, one goal, certainly not enough to seal the deal, but with how just rock solid these defenses happen to be, one goal could end up being enough. Yeah, it absolutely. You know, that's the thing. You don't want to play like it's it's over. You don't want to play like you got too much time left because we've seen several instances, you know, in this matchup where it goes down to something like this, a one nothing, a two two one game. It's just you never know when that one goal is going to be the last one. It could come in the first period. It can come in the final second. So you always have to sort of be cognizant, be ready, and capitalize on those chances. See a battle here in the corner. Tamu pinches in to get it. Eki again down low for Pleamaker. Makes his way all the way to the top there and throws a shot on. Kicked away by Faiz. Never know when you're going to get those random point shots as well. So tough for a goaltender. It's the puck continuing to bounce around. Eki for Potsloff. Pleamaker has that one interrupted by Adomi. It's Benito. His pass off the mark. Cape will play it out to his left, but Atred's again able to regain possession. Holding into the corner. Back to the point. King of Apes. Domi D to D. That shot save. Rebound scores! Atreds doubling up. Villapoika's second of the game. All smiles for Atreds. It's two to nothing. Right place, right time for Villapoika. That's not by accident. That's why he has so many goals. Positioning is half the battle right there. Excellent job by him to go wider. Wait for, you know, open up for that one time. Once he saw the shot was taken, collapsing back in on the goaltender, picking up that rebound perfectly and putting that one home behind Kape and Atreds have doubled up their lead here in this second period. And now's the point. If you're for Lunda, I think you do have to stretch this game out a little bit. We'll see how they respond. Hreds, though, certainly going to be looking for that insurance. Great read there by Nikki Daniels to take that one away. The pass is a little bit off the mark. Might open up a chance for Forlunda on the pressure. Have to be careful with possessions. That one knocked loose, and that's why. Poke checks like that. Playmaker tried the self-sauce up the middle. Try and generate speed. Five minutes to play. In the second period, again, game number one, this best of seven, our championship round for our winter season here in the ECL Elite Division. Again, there won't be that long of a wait before our spring season as well. It all leads to the grand final. The winner of this series is guaranteed a spot in that grand final as, again, the two champions will meet as Eki. Not able to hold on to that one. Tamu down low. Eki Playmaker might have gotten a piece of it. Faze with the glove. Could have gone just wide as well. Very close call for Lunda's best chance in the game. They're still putting the pressure on. We hit the final two minutes of this period. Domi's pass interrupted. And that one sent all the way down. Another interesting bounce. And it will result in an icing call. Face off coming up in the Lunda zone. That was an incredible passing play coming out from Falunda. I am I'm still kind of shocked at how FaZe was able to track it as well as he was. I mean, several quick passes around that slot area. Unfortunately for them, they could not find the back of them. That, that would have been huge at the end of the second. 
Final minute, plea maker along the wall, all the way back to the point and just out of the reach of Tamu. An opportunity here. H Red's gonna try to put the pressure on. Big hip check by Nikki Dangles. Now round to the right. Three seconds. That one cleared out. And that will do it. First period to H Red's. Second period to H Red's. A goal in both periods so far for Villa Poika. And it's looking good, Sin, heading into the third. Absolutely. I don't know if there's a team right now, uh, that you'd or you know team that right now that you you would trust more to to protect a two goal lead in the third period uh, than H Reds they've sort of proven themselves to be that new defensive dynamo the all around dynamo really um, you know starting from last season in the finals against Fralunda where I think they held them to like three goals in four games it's it, it kind of insane what they were able to do and here they are two goal lead heading into the third period, a familiar spot for them. They have a game plan in mind. The question is, can Ferlunda make the adjustments necessary? They've had some good chances. Yes. They've gotten some opportunities. Yes. Have they capitalized? No, the scoreboard is still empty for them. So it's going to take a little bit more, one or two chances. You're not gonna be able to bank on that because phase is a great goaltender. We saw his, you know, pregame stats, you know, for, for the playoffs, even though it's hovering around that 80% mark, he has made some enormous saves when called upon. So Ferlunda's going to have to throw everything, and I mean everything, in his face here. In the Season 12 final, H-Reds won Game 1, 2-1 to one in overtime. Philadelphia did not score a goal over the next three games. Three straight shutouts to end that series. Pressure is on here, but Ferlunda, former champions, certainly have the ability to battle back. Tamu's pass up to Potsloff again, forced to circle back in an errant pass there. H Reds certainly learning from their mistakes two seasons ago, as we saw last season, and that was we saw in the rewind again in our pregame. Incredible work to shut down the neutral zone in the last series, and they're doing it again here so far. Yeah, in the beginning, it was a bit harder for them. We saw Ferlunda gaining the line with a bit more consistency, and it's not a good sign to see that being shut down if you're Ferlunda because that's going to kind of give you flashbacks to that series from last year. Spinito sauces one in front, nearly tipped in on the backhand. A gigantic save for Cape to keep this one within reach for Ferlunda. Yeah, and a follow-up opportunity from, you guessed it, Villapoika right on the doorstep following the play up. Looked like he may have kind of got a whack at it, but it was covered up by Kappa. Azeki trying to lead things down the other way. Again, gets it to Pleamaker. The cut in, the one-timer blocked down. Again, Pleamaker around the back. Loose puck over to the half wall and down low. Pleamaker, but the main man in front. Great feed, better save. Faze denies Eki. That was a near perfect play. A little rollout right there between Pleamaker and Eki. Kind of got a scoop backhand on net, looking for the far side. Just couldn't quite get it far enough. And FaZe's glove swallowed it up. Off the draw, loose puck. Eki trying to hold on to it. A rocket pass off the pads of FaZe. Keeps that one out too. Good battle there. Step up by Loimu. He's still with it. Eki has it. Pleamaker throws one on. Eki with a chance at it as well. Still nothing doing off the blocker and around off the back glass. All these different looks. Faye is still able to make these saves. Unorthodox looks as they may be. Yeah, the pushback is coming hard from Ferlunda. Momentum in their hands right now. They have to keep it going. Every little bit counts. they got to get back into that zone. Easier said than done, but it's all in their hands right now. The dump and chase attempt will be offside. 11.31 to go here. In regulation for game number one for Lunda, down by two. Sin, obviously, the longer they go without a goal, if they even happen to get one at this point, it starts to be a bit of a question. The more concerning it is, even heading into game two, like you don't want to head into that second game off of getting shut out to start off this series. Yeah, definitely not. A, a lot of this game is mental, and, and, and that's going to be a huge mental win for Atres if they're able to win in that fashion. Filipoika for Nikki Dangles. Two men to beat. Nikki Dangles breaking through. Flying poke check. And it's in. H-Reds take a three to nothing lead here in the third period. What a play by Nikki Dangles. And the defending champs looking good here late in the third period. I mean, that's just absolutely massive from them. Uh, it's, yeah, I, it's. That's a heartbreaker. I don't know what else to say about that. If you're for Lunda right there, that's the last thing you need. But that's what can happen when you open that game up. When you have to push for those goals, that's when the counterattack from Atreds can burn you. And Nikki Dangles did just that. 
Goes down as an own goal, hence the replay skip and the quick return to action for Alunda. Now down by three. Eki's pass a little bit off the mark. As Loimu sends that back down low, eight minutes to play. Might not be the latest stage of the third period, but when you're down by three, certainly feels like the clock is your enemy. So this one's recovered. Filipoika on a brace in this game with the two goals. Tries to get it back. Good movement here. Loose puck. King of Apes steps in to keep that one alive. Great work here by Atreds. At the very least, killing time. Villapoika gets a little bit too aggressive, and Forlunda will go back to the power play for the second time in this game. If any sort of comeback is going to happen here, it has to start right off this power play, and they need one quick as well. Um, you know, have to make your opponent pay for the mistakes. We mentioned in the pregame, Atreds can get into penalty trouble. This is where Forlunda have got to show them they will not be allowed to do that without being punished. Here's Teemu, down for Reki, contested, but still holding on to it. Loimu, that shot saved by Faze, loose puck handled by Domi. Benito, able to clear that one out. Foot race for it, good body positioning there by Teemu to fend him off. Of course, there has been some uh, controversy over uh, certain actions regarding holding out the defensive skill stick to shut down people, but fair game in terms of body positioning. It was a, a dead race for the puck. Here is Pleamaker now. Tries to cut in and does, poked away at the last moment. Domi's pass held in. Tamu back down low. Now Pleamaker can't hold on to it. And it's Nicky Dangles. Taking his time. We are back to five on five. Four minutes to play here in game number one. H Reds. Picking up right where they left off. Rebound attempt. Potsloff denied. What a stop again by FaZe. Nikki Dangles pass off the mark. There's a foot race for this one. No icing is the call. One back shot scores. Nikki Dangles second of the game. Never give up on the play. Four to nothing. Atreds here in game one. Wow. I mean, that's called taking advantage of a situation right there. As you mentioned, no icing on the call. And that was a beautiful pass out from behind the net to Nikki Dangles. Kind of a... Uh, no, I wouldn't say undetected, but he had just a little bit of a gap and a little bit of space to get that shot away. And he beats Cape on that far side. And that will put a nice little bow on this one for Atreds. And that's exactly the way you want to start off the finals if you're them. For the longest times, we have a potential chance here again. For the longest time, we talked about it. And the discussion around this league was Havu from Lunda. It's going to be one of the two until they dissolve. Hred saying, no, that's, that, that doesn't need to be the case. We can make an impact here. And now here they are, defending champions after sweeping from Lunda last season. And a convincing game one victory on deck here with just 40 seconds to play. Again, game two coming up in just a few moments upon the conclusion of this one. And it'll be very interesting to see what kind of on-the-fly adjustments we get from Forlundes. Nikki Dangles trying to break out the Michigan. And a pass in front intercepted by Tamu. Sim, we've been waiting for the Michigan attempt all season long. We finally saw it there. Trouble for FaZe, knocked loose by Pleamaker. And a pass intercepted and sent all the way down. Three H-Reds leading the way to cancel out the icing. Final six seconds. Loose puck is covered by Cape. Sen, how'd you like that Michigan attempt? <laughs> I mean, if it was going to come from someone, you kind of had a feeling it was going to come from Nikki Dangles, and they're actually pulling the goalie as well. This is, I would say, a bit of style points right now for Atreds as looking to get one more on the board. Unfortunately, they can't connect on that one-timer across the slot, but that's their mental state right now. They are confident going in. They got to be feeling confident after that first game, and, I mean, you saw Nikki Dangles. I, I would say definitely... One of the one of the one of the flashiest players here in the ECL now, you know, both uh, both with uh, you know his skills, his thumbs on the ice, and uh, definitely not afraid to voice his opinions either. We love the personalities, of course, from all these players, and I mean, busting or trying to at least bust that out here in the finals in the first game. It's you know definitely uh, says a lot about where H Reds are at, and you know if you're Falunda right now. Uh, you got to have some kind of response because it's exactly your greatest fear right there. You allowed too many goals, and not only that, you could not find a way to score on phase despite getting several pretty prime-looking prime, uh, prime -looking scoring chances. 
That is now four straight shutouts for FaZe in a championship setting. He has allowed one goal in his five games played in a championship setting. Unbelievable. From him, if Sin, if I'm not mistaken, was again named MVP by his team last season and so far uh, so good to lead back in that direction as we will hopefully get a look here at some of the goals that uh, we happen to see. And if uh, it wasn't FaZe last year, it may have been Villa Poika, but regardless, I think both of those two showed why they're so important in this game one. Yeah, uh, I mean, what a play right here. That was a stick lift to free up the, the trailer to get possession of that puck right there, feeding that back out front to Nikki Dangles. And I mean, that's just that's just a, something so little that can't can be overlooked. And I think we both missed it on the initial broadcast right there. And we're seeing that one from Villa Poika. You see the desperation coming out from Tamu trying to get that defensive skill stick in there. Everyone crashing the net and. I believe it was, it looks like Loimu on, on kind of the follow-up as he was poking kind of from behind his stick sort of nudged the puck back towards the net. And that's how that one found its way in. And well, you want another HREDS goal? We have one right here. Some D to D work, kind of a uh, off balance shot, but sometimes that's all you need right there through traffic off the pad of Cape off a skate twice, off a skate twice. That Villapoika is able to pick up right there and put home on the rebound after crashing the net, after opening himself up for that one time. That was just a great, great game coming out from Atreds and a complete game. It, it's really not much else to say about that. A huge statement victory for Atreds is how we pretty much sum this up. We'll get one more look here. As again, that initial goal from Villapoika. That started things off. Two goals for him. Two goals for Nikki Dangles to start off this series. Phenomenal work from yeah. H Reds again. They have a one to nothing series lead here in this best of seven. As mentioned, game two coming up in just a few moments. Before we get to that, though, I mentioned it a little bit earlier on. And again, throughout the broadcast today, we will have coverage of our awards. And I want to bring everybody back in here if we uh, can. And indeed, boys, first and foremost, before we even get to that, your thoughts on what you happen to see in game number one. Uh, Nick, I'll throw it to you first. Man, what a statement game by Atreds, I think, is uh, you go through what happened last season and you're, you're, you have your eyes set on something that you want. And then to have what happened in the series... Uh, during the regular season take place where the sweep happens the other way, I, I don't think you're going to take that too lightly. So uh, what, a, what a remarkable statement by Atreds to come out swinging and then keep the pressure on. I know that momentum doesn't hold over in the next game, but I think mentally it kind of does. Yeah, I mean, Brandon as well, an opportunity for you to give your thoughts here is, uh, again, a phenomenal game one victory. Yeah, and I think for that game one, it could not have started much better for Atreds, not just in the result, but in how they played. Something that was so prevalent in that game is in how their offensive scoring chances started out from great defense. We know how good they are on each level of the ice, but when they're able to capitalize and get those opportunities off of turnovers, getting chances for themselves... It's so, so big, especially when you're able to combine that with some of the big saves that FaZe is able to make on the other end. For that game, Atreds, really everything going to par for them, the strategy going perfectly to point, and I don't think they could have asked for not just a better result, but really a better game in terms of how they play it on every level of the ice. So with that, again, we mentioned the awards. It's time for our first one here now. One that started last year. It's our transfer of the season. What new addition to a club made the biggest impact? Or again, a reminder here as well. These are voted on by the players within the elite division. Uh, in terms of the transfers of the season, I believe we had it as a final five in the top five. As you see them there, I dangled you out in his return to ZSC Esports. Ika Valko, his return to the Elite Division in general with IQ. A phenomenal season for them, making the playoffs. Weagleson for Havu Gaming. Sebi Larson for Feriastad. And perhaps the favorite for this particular award, it is Nikkei 
from Sawo. Uh, Sin, I'll say, maybe not the only award we'll see him up for here in these next two days. Yeah, I was just going to kind of think about that. I'm like, yeah, the, the players all voting. I mean, we, there's a chance for, for Nikkei to, to win quite a few just with his phenomenal performance throughout the regular season. A near 90% save percentage in the ECL, which is just, I mean, like unheard of, really. Absolutely. Now, I mean, Nick or Brandon, I could throw it to you as well. Any general thoughts on who you think might win this or just in general, uh, you know, things you might have noticed from these five this season? Yeah, just fun to watch the transfers kind of take place. And we talk about those impact players. You can go back to things like the Cape move a couple of seasons ago as well. And you're taking that forward and Weagleson really wowed me with Havu and uh, his play was just remarkably stellar i love to see that we have some of these players stepping into the ecl elite that have a little bit of a different play style than what the normalcy was for a while so that's shaken things up to a bit as well and it's been fun to watch absolutely so with that let's throw it now to the winner the transfer of the season and the winner is do we have a drum roll for this we should have a drum roll for this <laughs> the winner the transfer of the season. Who else would it be? It is Nikkei of Sawo Esports. Sin, you mentioned it. Ungodly. Unheard of numbers. And again, it might not be the only time we see him in terms of an award conversation here between tonight and tomorrow. Yeah, no, at least with the nominations, his name's going to be up there quite a bit. I mean, you just can't. You can't look around it. He sort of, you know, became the second guy for HREDs once FaZe took over. And, you know, here he comes joining the Sawo team. And this was a team that we thought, okay, you know, they could be on the inside of the playoff picture, um, you know, or it's, you know, kind of a wild card. And then here they come securing that second seed, just not stopping the entire season, having this incredible shutdown defense. Combine that with Nikkei between the pipes, making the saves that he was making. It's hard to really argue with that, how much of an impact that he was from, you know, getting Sawo from that, you know, maybe middle to lower tier of the playoffs into that second seed and actually battling with eight shreds uh, for a lot of the season for that top seed. Certainly wasn't the finish to their season that they were hoping for. But again, in terms of regular season awards, respect is due towards Nikkei's direction. Gentlemen, your thoughts here. I mean, B Major, we'll throw it over to you here first. We're about ready for game number two, or at least getting there. Uh, your thoughts on this next game. Again, now that is four straight games that we have seen from Forlunda without a goal against HREDs in a championship setting. Absolutely, but I don't think Forlunda's going to be thinking about that too much. Obviously, with that game one, a bit rough for them, but they did have some chances, as Sin alluded to, FaZe making two or three really big saves, especially in that second and third period. It just kind of felt like the opportunities compared to when they got them to when h Reds got them weren't really just there for them at the right times or in the right places. I think Forlunda, they're going to come out very aggressive in this game too. They know the history of it being two sweeps in a row in the finals. They know that they're able to beat this H-Reds team, but they're going to have to get some pucks in that, and they're going to have to find a way to beat FaZe, who I know it wasn't a large sample size of what we saw from him, but he looked pretty sharp there through three periods on what was some pretty tough opportunities that he had to face throughout. So I think the big thing is just being able to find a way to beat him and just trying to get that momentum rolling from there on. And Nick as well, I want to throw it to you here too, because while you certainly weren't the only man to work on that rewind feature that we had... You sure sound smart when we're talking about the blue line game and the trap game of HREDs because it was on full display in game number one. It definitely was. And when you have to break through that red wall, it kind of gets a little bit difficult sometimes. And I have to ask the question, and maybe this is one for the panel, but at what point, and maybe is the panic button now, at what point do you as Frolunda maybe need to change up what you're doing? That's I mean, kind of tough. I would I would say it's I, I would say panic button, not quite, but there has to be changes. We we can't see for Linda fall into a sort of pattern that we saw. Um, we'll say you know in some previous seasons that Havu fell into where they're so comfortable yeah. with their style, it's gotten them so much success they wouldn't change it. and They've been forced to. We saw it kind of from ha uh, sorry Sawo in this season when they went up against Granite. All of a sudden their game was thrown back into their face and. They just seemingly had this mentality. We're just going to stick to it and stay with it. And well, they just got ousted in the first round in an upset. If you're for Linda here, it, the change has to start start now. Dump and chase something. I, I'm not too sure what it is. It's hard to find an answer against you know an hatred squad that is is so good defensively. 
It does make me wonder, throughout the course of a season, we can see what happens to change gameplay-wise in terms of the meta. Sin, your thoughts here, because of course we've been here for the majority of the season calling these games, your thoughts on, hey, we're not noticing Eki posting up in front of goal and deflections yeah. were something that were tuned about a month or so ago in a patch, and all of a sudden that doesn't seem to get, you know go to option for them. We don't know for sure if that's just a change they wanted to make, coincidental, or if it is in reaction to that. Uh, but certainly at the start of the season, uh, he was looking like a prime Joe Pavelski, just posting up in front, tipping everything in left and right. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, that that's a weapon that I, th I still think is there, perhaps not as precise as it was in when you're going up against a team like Atreids, who are so good at blocking shots, who are so good at those transitions. One awkward bounce off a shin pad. You got Villa Poik and Nikki Dangles bearing down near the goaltender. It can be scary, but I think that threat has to be there. You have to try to spread out this Atreids squad, because if you allow them to play to where they know that uh, puck is going to come from, they're going to eat you alive. Game two coming up in just a few moments. And again, as we get ready for that, of course, trying to fix some of the audio troubles on that side, get the game sound back there for you. Again, a reminder a little bit later on as well. And upon the conclusion of our second game, of course, it's not just the transfer of the season in terms of awards that we have there. Comeback Player of the Year will be uh, revealed at the end of this second game and some great options in there as well for that particular reward. Don't know if we have the graphic ready to go uh, for the five finalists for that one. And indeed, there you see them again. What a surprise. I tangled you out. Nika Valko, <laughs> both up there as are Teme, Avatu, and Vilikun. Since some good representation for IQ this season. Yeah, absolutely. And, and well-deserved. They, you know, they were a team that... No one was really quite sure about, and they came in and had themselves a terrific season, and we, I, I still think at times they were still kind of being underrated, and, and I think they expressed, you know, that much as well with some of their tweets as they made the finals, you know, like, hey, here we are, and then in the four seed, and, you know, everyone, or the, you know, everyone predicted we would be here at the end of the year. I mean, they were a bubble team, and they came out here and I think shocked a lot of people, including us, just how well they did and just how well they finished off that season. Unfortunately, dropping, you know, in the first round in a tough series against Fediestad, but it was still, you know, incredible from them. So again, we will unveil the winner of that award and others a little bit later on. And of course, we'll hear from uh, Nick and Brandon a little bit later on as well. A big thank you to them for their thoughts here in between games. And we are about ready to go for game number two. And obviously, uh, such an interesting atmosphere, right? Like this original production for this final was supposed to be a little bit bigger and better. But obviously, due to some restrictions, we're kind of set to this uh, condensed setting but what an interesting setting it is to have yeah. these two teams face to face because at times in live finals, it's almost like, okay, you're both on a stage, but you're over here, you're over here. These guys are looking face to face essentially throughout this entire matchup. Yeah, I think it, I think it kind of adds a, a whole new dynamic here. If you're scoring those goals, you're feeling good about yourselves, you look over at them. You know, kind of e even just a look over there, maybe trying to get into their heads. I don't know if there's any games and shit going on with that in, a, you know, in the sort of a, a mental battle sense or chirps going on. Who knows? But either way, I mean, you look for any sort of edge that you can get here in something with high stakes as this. So here we go. Game number two underway. A four to nothing victory for Atreds in game number one. We'll see how they respond. They are in their home. Uh, we're going to go cream colored and red. They're beautiful, beautiful road jerseys for Alunda in the home red for this particular matchup. And again now for Alunda, four straight games. The last time they scored was game one of last season's final. They were shut out three straight times, and now we make it four after that game one victory. Uh, despite some good success in the regular season for them, of course, Atreds, just a, a different monster, mentality monsters almost in a sense. Here's a three-on-one developing. Benito's pass across and a good kick save there by Cape to prevent that early goal. Dangerous, dangerous moments early on. Just in any scoring opportunity. It doesn't even have to be a high percentage chance. And you know that Atreds can find a way to bury it. But here's Eki, unable to hold on to that one. And Atreds going to try to get things going back down the other way. Loose puck recovered here. That pass... Intercepted, and Eki 
Going to have to take things slow and steady through the neutral zone. Finds Potsloff. He had a couple of chances in game number one. That pass, not enough on it. Contested in the corner. King of Apes. Can't hold it. Playmaker has it knocked loose. The last second tried to go back to the point, and that puck will go all the way down. Couple unfortunate instances there uh, for Ferlund as they kind of clear the zone themselves. Uh, Playmaker sort of had Potsloff in the middle with some space, but that puck came, uh, sorry, that poke came out from King of Apes that completely prevented that pass from going through. And then, of course, uh, trying to feed the point as Loimu skate in the other direction, can't quite reach out and grab it. But flashback to the beginning of this when Ferlunda seemingly went all out to try to get some attack and like a, a quick opportunity that on the counterattack, when it was kind of a three to uh, two on one, it was Potsloff who was the last man back for Ferlunda here. So I think we're definitely seeing a Ferlunda team that's going to be willing to be that more aggressive. They need goals. They have to be able to be, uh, you know, at some point play with a lead against this team. Zeki trying to hold on to it in the corner. Back to the point, fakes that slap shot, that pass though a little bit off the mark. Now it's Villapoika for Benito and back again. Great movement, a one-timer blocked by Eki. Crucially so. Back to the point again, King of Apes, that shot blocked down. Pots off, able to get it up to Eki. Playmaker, that one on goal, Phased handles it, sends it over to the corner. A loose puck, Eki shot, another stop by Phased. Playmaker going to be able to corral that one, the wraparound bid stifled. It'll be H-Reds back in control. Some good moments here for, for Lunda early on. Unorthodox looks and often that is what it's going to take to be the goaltender of this caliber sin. Yeah, you got to feel like Atreus is plain enough where if you throw those kind of normal looks at him, uh, the reason it seems like they're the first to some of those loose pucks is because they're just so used to it. They they play so much together. They can kind of almost predict where that puck's going to go off some of those, as you said, orthodox looks here. So I like what Ferlunda is doing, trying to throw the other looks at them. And here they come, possible two-on-one. Eki, let's see what he can do. Pass for Playmaker, and what a poke check there by King of Apes, and he draws the call. Perhaps a frustration moment there for Playmaker. H-Reds will have their first power play of this series. Yeah, it looks like he got a bit frozen up right there as he re received the puck, didn't uh, maintain his speed, was unable to get a shot away. Not even a chance on that great back check from H-Reds. And now they're going to get rewarded with a power play. See what they can do, H-Reds. Another fantastic power play in the regular season. Third best. In the D2D -D work here, Villapoika, there's the one-timer, blocked, rebound, scores, the loose puck, Nikki Dangles, able to find it, H-Red strike first, a costly mistake from Playmaker with that tripping call, and Sin, it's, uh, you know, he's a reserved guy anyway, but some interesting body language there as well. Yeah, absolutely, and you know, that's, that's got to feel bad, definitely. When when you're unable to get the offensive chance and you take a penalty right after that, you feel awful, and I mean, tamu has got to feel pretty bad as well. It was a sort of a battle there between he and Nikki Dangles, and Tamu's guy did reach for it, but Nikki Dangles was able to get that body position at the last moment, put that rebound home, and what, what Ferlunda failed to do in that first game, Atreds have done here on their first power play opportunity is capitalize on a mistake, and they're up one nothing because of it. Somehow Loimu ends up with another injury as well. Keep an eye out on that for the right defender of Fralunda. Seki leading things down the other way. Two minutes to go here in the first period of this second game. Again, our best of seven. The ECL winter season final shot blocked down. Faye is maybe even got a piece of that clean. He's able to make the cover. Offensive zone draw coming up here. Yeah, big opportunity right there. I like the mentality from Playmaker, just kind of firing that on net, even if, you know, if it doesn't create a juicy rebound, maybe you even catch the own face sliding or something, but, you know, another offensive zone look for them. Oh, Playmaker shoveled one right through the blue paint. What an opportunity. And it goes to the wayside, that big slap shot off the face off. So close yet so far. Eki can't hold on to it. Villapoika sends it out, and that will do it for the first period. A frustrating 20 minutes there for Playmaker for sure. Yeah. H Reds, a one to nothing lead sent off of this goal from Nikki Dangles. I mean, I was just going to sort of say that, but we'll take a look at this goal first. You can see the battle right there, but even though Tamu's guy reached for it, Nikki Dangles was able to get that inside track on him and just move forward, get that rebound, put it home. You can see right there as he moved over, he was kind of caught. You see that stick coming in for it, but he didn't have the body position anymore as he shifted over the second that Nikki Dangles was shifting on the inside. But I think you said it best frustrating not just for playmaker but it has to be for this entire team as well that was you know a bit of a rougher uh, period for playmaker obviously the penalty leading to the goal missing opportunities as well and uh, it's 
And if you're for Lunda, it, it just feels like more of the same. You got some good looks. I mean, none bigger than Ple- that one, that last one for Playmakers. He sort of just scooped it wide off the rebound, probably still wondering how the heck that one didn't go in the back of the net. But the positives at the same time, Fralunda did generate a whole heck of a lot of chances. And the problem with that is, and I think where the frustration is going to come from, it's the same result as last game after the first. Second period about ready to begin here. Again, the action brought to you by our friends at Wilhelm Kobolon Lakritzi and ST Hockey. So we'll see what Fralunda is able to do in early offside call here. All the pressure in the world on their shoulders. And again, since as we've talked about H Reds, I mean, feeling confident, Benito outright said, yeah, if we play our best game, we can sweep them again. If that doesn't, you know, scream confidence, I don't know what does. Yeah, I mean, it's the entire H Reds, H Reds squad, which just exudes confidence, you know, some in different ways than the other. You know, Benito, definitely more of a soft-spoken person, but he's got that C for a reason here. We see it with his play on the ice. We're seeing it here, winning another faceoff in the neutral zone there to give his team possession. And again, H Reds more than willing to take their time here on these potential breakouts, looking to get things going. This one back into their own zone. See what Domi can do here. And again, the story of last postseason. The defense pairing for H Reds and their evolution into arguably the best pairing as Playmaker. Yacht Angle 1T was stopped as well. Phase has been fantastic so far here tonight. As Nikki Dangles recovers one. Loose pocket and big blocker saved there by Cape. May have skipped just wide. Eki's pass off the mark. Nikki Dangles over for Villapoika. Now it's Domi pinching in around the back of the net in front, and Playmaker's there to pick that one off. Incredibly quick movement from H. Reds. Playmaker lose puck, and it goes below the goal line. H. Reds looking to set things up down the other way one more time. Here's Benito. Quick little give and go. Now around the back of the net. Lose puck that Eki will win. Playmaker's with him. See what he does. Throws one on. Eki there somehow doesn't find the back of the net. Another. Fantastic chance for Forlunda somehow not getting that first goal of this series. Still though in the attacking zone. Puck out to FaZe's right. A little bit of trouble. Tamu pinching in. His shot stopped by FaZe as well. Another one. He scores! On the backhand, we have the first goal of this series for Forlunda. And Sin, sometimes that's what it takes. Throw pucks on. You never know what will happen. That was just exactly what they needed right there. That was just great job to follow up by Tamu right there. He just sticks with it and is able to put that one home. I mean, not the prettiest look, but you don't care at this point. You just tied that game. You scored your first goal of this series, and you've been looking pretty good. It's time to build on that. Incredible goal there, all things considered. Tamu worked incredibly hard for that one. We are tied at one apiece, we'll see what the response happens to be from H Reds. Again, four straight shutouts dating back to last season's final. They won't be able to make it five. One timer blocked. Second shot scores! Eki doubles it up for Lunda. Lead for the first time here in the finals. Absolutely massive, and here come Fralunda. This is what they wanted to see. Just a lot of pushback and some quick goals in succession here, and the floodgates seemingly open as Eki picks that one up on a rebound, puts it home on the forehand. The camera celebration coming out from Loimu, of course, as well. Hyping the boys up. They have a lead here. Two quick goals, and all of a sudden, you've changed your fate in this game, and you're playing with a lead, which is a much, much more preferred uh, situation for Fralunda to be in. Now we'll see if Atrez are going to have to stretch that game out playing to Forlunda if they can make them pay for any mistakes but we are going to see a power play coming out as that was a uh, interference a, a little bump uh by Eki surprisingly as we see it right there on Nikki the Dangles guy. and H-Reds he- head into the box yeah I mean just bumped the wrong guy that little bit of uh unintentional interference in a sense H-Reds one for one on the power play so far in this game We'll see if they can make it to one timer blocked loose puck and Potsloff's able to clear it out and he's going to look to maybe give chase as well. Looks to back off seven and a half to go again. Two goals in this period from for London to really turn things around. Snicky dangles that pass that one cleared out. Domi couldn't hold the line. 
We'll have a face off here. Big opportunity right here. Now's the time where the response is really going to be important for either of these teams here. Obviously, H Reds want to try to capitalize on this power play. It's a good kill so far from Faluna. They just got to keep winding that down, not allow them to gain the zone with any sort of ease. Nikki dangles the spin move to protect. Benito has it. Spin move of his own. King of Apes loses it. Cleared out by Loimu. Great job on the kill by Ferlunda so far here in this one. Good after getting scored on. A shorthanded situation earlier on in this game. That one sent out as well. That should just about bring us back to a five on five. Ferlunda survive it. They try the quick out. Eki on the wrong side to be able to pick that one up. But a good job there by Ferlunda. Surviving that scare, keeping that lead intact, at least for the moment. Domi, that shot, another chance they score! Incredible, Villapoika, ever the opportunist. One might say the ultimate opportunist. This one's for Nick, he plays with a little bit of an edge, and it is tied at two apiece. Wow, just sort of kind of un unexpected right there. A pinball in the slot off of an odd angle shot coming out nearly from, you know, the outside of the circle near the goal line and again, Villapoika, right place, right time. It's we kind of, you know, find yourself saying that a lot about him and that's not by accident. He's just, that's what goal scorers do is they continue to find themselves in situations to get those pucks and rifle them home. We have a tie game. It's incredible just how all season long, Sin, the puck has found a way to just be where he needs it to be to score those goals consistently. Under three minutes to go, the Ferlunda lead doesn't last long. A interesting moment there again. Trying to pick that one up in front. We'll see again. It's all about the responses. We've seen how Atreds have responded. What will Ferlunda do now that we're tied at two apiece? King of Apes bumped off the puck. And we'll see. With a minute to go, we have maybe one more goal. There have been three of them in this period alone. Sent behind the goal. Nicky dangles back to the point for King of Apes. Domi, pass for Benito. Trying to get around Pleamaker. That shot kicked away by Cape. Four seconds to go. Domi keeps it in. One timer to flex wide. And that'll bring us to the end of the second period. Tied up at two goals apiece. Setting the stage for a very interesting third period. Yeah, and maybe a little bit of a scary moment there at the end as they're getting that one more point shot. And we've seen, you never know what can kind of come of those. And it's always, you know, scary. We saw Loimu getting down to the shot block, but Tamu was able to grab it, sort of scoop it around the net and kill the rest of the clock. But here we are, tied at two. A lot of back and forth action. Obviously, Atred starting off with that lead for Lunda, snatching it away with two quick goals. And the response towards the end of the period from Atreds here is setting up What's going to be quite the finish here as we get some looks at that last goal. It was a shot that just went off of kind of uh, the back end of Villapoika, who then picked it up, but it took a few bounces in the air before it just went kind of right to his stick, and he put that one home on the uh, that that uh, short side of a uh, of phase. Excuse me, and that shot coming through, Eki just kind of picking that up off of a bounce off of a shin pad. So again, we're kind of seeing when you throw those pucks on net, it's generating some chances here. It looks like the adjustment. Uh, that was sort of made from Fralinda, not afraid of those kind of shot block counterattacks. And, you know, when you're getting rewarded with that, I think you got to keep going back to the well. Third period underway, game number two of this series. H Reds, a one to nothing lead so far. Looking again to become the first team to go back to back as champions in the elite division. Some great teams have tried, including this Fralinda squad. Nobody's been able to do it yet, though. Hreds might just be the first. Again, the conclusion of this series will be tomorrow. Again, tune in. We'll uh, have a little bit more information and the fine details for you a little bit later on in this broadcast. Again, continuing to unveil award winners as well. In the ECL awards voted on by the players, of course, transfer of the season already named as Nike from Sabo Esports after a phenomenal season. Sin, I mean, it's it's one of those things we've jinxed it before, saying next goal wins, and then before we know it, there's three more goals, but it really does have that feeling here. Yeah, any any sort of game between these two, when it's this tight, you it's, it's always kind of got that feeling, because every single goal is so, so impactful. You kind of live and die with it, and it's, it's those plays that really are what breed championships. 
They lose puck, kicked away by Cape. Thought there might have been a chance to play that one. Let's see, here's Pleamaker. Space short side, may have hit the side of the goal on the backhand. Pleamaker, a little bit snake bitten. At times this postseason, Benito's between the legs move, at least gets the puck into the attacking zone, but Tamu's there to be able to take that one away. Vincent, you see so often just having to drop that puck back, I mean, intentional or not. Delayed offside here, and there is the call with 11.44 to go. Yeah, I mean, you, you kind of said it. You sort of always have to drop it back uh, at times against Atrus. They're just so solid at that blue line. We saw a bit earlier, you know, for Linda going for some of those dump and chase opportunities as well. Right now, opting for a bit more controlled break-ins. And they got to be careful, again, those neutral zone turnovers. That can lead to those counterattacks for Atreds. Again, 6,000 euros at stake for the winners of this series. And, of course, again, punching their ticket to our new grand final format along with the winner of our spring season which again starts soon as next month is hard to believe as that is actually said it might even be right at the end of this month I mean again uh, it's what the players wanted though nobody uh, necessarily excited to play the game late into July can't necessarily blame them on that front it's a it's a long and grueling season these these seasons happen to be to begin with yeah, absolutely. I mean, 30 games, it always, it's kind of a catch-22. Sometimes it feels like a lot. Sometimes it feels like a little. At the beginning, it feels like you got so much to play for. All of a sudden, you're a third through that season. I think, you know, it kind of depends uh, where you're at in the season, where you're at in the standings as well. When you get pushed down further into those standings, sometimes the season can feel a heck of a lot shorter here. But, yeah, I mean, just the impact that it's going to have carrying over from the winter season to that spring season is, is just awesome. King of Apes over for Domi. Having trouble, Eki able to strip him of the puck. Pleamaker trying to generate speed. Shot save, rebound! Eki had a great chance there. Didn't get all of it, though. But a good opportunity there. Again, shots on net working out. Four for Lunda. Loose puck played back across. Big save by Cape. Ever composed in the crease. Four for Lunda. Another pass in front, Potsloff finds Playmaker, here's Eki, in all alone, and he's not, he loses possession, that shot off the blocker doesn't go. I was going to say he was knocked off the puck, somehow they got away with a poke check from behind. I think right as he tried to pull it to that forehand, the poke came and somehow disrupted that, what a back check coming out from Atreds, that was... Eki in all alone on your goaltender. I, I really thought that we were going to see an incredible chance or see FaZe have to make a miraculous save, but no shot whatsoever. What a performance from the defensive age reds there. 2.32 to play here in this third period. Next goal, I think we can say now, likely to win this one, although, hey, you never know. It's Benito for Nikki Dangles. Big kick save by Cape on the backhand attempt. Stretch pass for Eki. Good protection. Now Pleamaker. Again, one timer blocked. Tamo able to keep it in. His slap shot blocked down by the traffic. Final minute again. A real time minute here in the third, but another offside call against H Reds. That's why I always hesitate in the third period <laughs> to say, oh yeah, that next goal could be the or maybe the last one. That real time minute feels like so, so much can happen here. And it's kind of crazy to see the low amount of time and attack from either of these te uh from either of these teams in this game as we see a timeout coming uh from I believe for Linda right now. N neither team even surpassing the four minute mark. There hasn't been a lot of sustained pressure. A lot of the goals coming off those initial quick chance, you know, feedback to the putt. Uh, sorry, feedback to the point, put the puck on net and rebounds are happening and stuff like that. Those are the things that are sort of being capitalized uh, for either of these teams here. And it just kind of goes to show you how hard it is to be able to sustain some pressure when you know, your opponent is so good and so hungry to get into those loose bucks and how much more cautious you want to be. Don't over four check or else you could have an, you know, an odd man situation uh, coming back the other way. But shout out to Kappa. He's had to make a couple tough saves here. That one on the one timer. That was Villa Poika, the league's leading goal scorer throughout the regular season with a tremendous one time chance that Kappa just sort of turned away. And a bit later on, he had a in tight look, I think, from Nikki Dangles that he also turned away. So. Big, big moments from him. Remember those saves here for Linder able to find a marker here late in the third. Pots off the face-off edge. He wins another one for Linda in control. Tamo's pass broken up. And back to the neutral zone. Again, 
worth remembering. Not every uh, player, of course, is there uh, as a live fight. You know, in this final, of course, the LAN event in Finland. It's intriguing to see how that might affect some people in terms of the communication. As it is stripped loose, Tamu. Trying to work his way through. Three members of H-Reds on him. He still finds the pass up to Eki. Tamu again not able to hold on to it. King of Apes, 15 seconds to go. Eki the interception. Playmakers there with him. Eki still has it. In the corner, pass across broken up. Potsloff can't get that shot on him. With that sin, for the first time, it was almost expected. And here we are, overtime, coming up in game number two. Uh, this, yeah, the stakes continue to get higher here. Game two overtime. This is so, so big for both of these teams, but especially if you're for Linda, you want this goal. You want to even this series up. You do not want to go down two games to Hreds. And if you're Hreds, we know they have that killer mentality. We know they believe that they could once again sweep this series, no matter the kind of scoreline, no matter how close it may seem, they believe in themselves to get four wins in a row. So it's really going to kind of have to start here. There, It's... Uh, yeah, if, if you're either of these teams, I mean, this is this is pretty nuts. This is about as the highest stakes as it can get. I know their hands have got to be sweating right now, and they got to be feeling at least a little bit of the pressure. As we're getting a nice little in-depth look at some of where these shots are located. You never really see that screen all that often. I do never you? actually do. <laughs> <laughs> sure, some people are like, wait a minute, that's in the game. I didn't even, yeah, okay, I'll, I'll be the first to admit that. I don't want to be, I'm a, supposed to be the color guy here and know stuff about the game, but here I'm like, I've never seen that before. Well, there you go. Worth uh, pointing out, and a shout out to B-Major for this particular note. Regular season matchup, they went to overtime for London 1 at 5-4. to four. Playmaker scored the winner in that game, and be appropriate to see him score the winner in this one. Again, he's had some great chances. He absolutely has, and... At, at some point, they're going to start going in for him, right? He's just too good of a player to continue to continue to just not capitalize. Let's see what happens here. Puck back to the neutral zone. Loimu now will dump it in. Potsloff gives chase. Bouncing puck handled well by Villapoika. King of Apes sending that one around. Villapoika again having to drop it right back down. One turnover could be enough to generate the chance for the other team in an attacking sense. Tamu has to hand that one off. Becky's had some great moments in this game. He treads back in control. Benito for Nikki Dangles. Pass in front. Broken up. Playmakers pass off the mark. Won't carry all the way down for icing. Gives him a chance to maybe put a little bit of forechecking pressure on. Domi back for King of Apes. Good movement there. Nikki Dangles, though, again, nowhere to go. Loose pucks all over the ice. Nikki Dangles, the shot, it's in! Nikki Dangles gets the winner. H-Reds win it in overtime and take a 2-0 series lead. Heartbreak for Frolunda Sim with that one. That is a tough, tough goal to give up. Yeah, that is... That's absolutely rough. I mean, that's just kind of a, a jam play right there that Nikki Dangles is able to get. He took the initial shot as well. You can see the pokes coming out. It hits a leg and just kind of continues to sort of slide. You saw Kafe go down to the butterfly. I'm not, again, exactly sure, sure how it found its way in right there if there's a follow-up tap from Nikki Dangles. Either way, pretty simple play. You're putting those pucks to the net once again, and that seems to be how both teams are really able to get a lot of their chances here, and that's a huge, huge, huge goal from Atred to take a 2-0 series lead over for Linda, who, uh, they're in a precarious position once again. To say the least, again, swept in last season's final. They trail 2-0 in this series now, as we'll get one more look here at the winner. As it looks like it's going to be teammate incidental contact, not even a shot. I mean, I, I there's nothing you can do about that, really, except not allow the puck to end up in that situation in the first place. Sin, how do you read this this winner? I mean, it's kind of tough. It, it's very hard. You had Villapoika in front of Nicky Dangles. He still was able to sort of control the puck uh, through that. The puck, yeah, I mean, shot off of, off of the defender, then Villapoika's stick sort of keeps it in play 
And Nikki Dangles is able to tap that in, guide it in, as it looked like it was heading to the post. But, you know, that's just, you know, obviously not 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 a great situation at the end of the day for, for Linda to sort of find themselves in. And that's why we kind of saw a lot of the players just sort of throwing that puck on net a lot in that game and had that feel of like a bounce could end it. And that's the way it, it definitely looked. And unfortunately for Forlunda, the bounce was not on their side. And if you're a edge, you're feeling good. You're riding high. You have a 2-0 series lead. So with that, two games in the books. We still have our third and final game of tonight's broadcast to come, along with a little bit of a uh, little bit of pregame, some recap of what we just saw, and again another award that we'll be handing out here as well. So stick with us. Let's throw it over to a quick word from our sponsors. We'll be right back. Wilhelm Valu sopii kuin valettu mihin vaan. Minkä päällä lakukastike maistuu parhaalta? Ei voi tietää ellei kokeile. Kouvolan lakritsi. As we bring you back in here, Nick DeMeo, F5 Penguin, alongside Brandon Bigsby, B Major. And of course, what a great, great series so far. Heartbreaking here for Fralunda as now H Reds has a suffocating 2 0 lead after two games. Yeah, you can't help but to feel for Fralunda to lose the game like that. We're up two to one. Great job from H Reds to take it into overtime, but just unfortunate to see that game end on a bit of a funny bounce. But that's the way the game goes sometimes. You have to be in the right position to get those. H Reds and Nikki Dangles were in that case, and they find themselves up two to nothing because of it. Now, for Lunda, the pressure is on them. Backs maybe against the wall. Things start to ramp up a little bit, but we know how they are. They are not unused to any situation. If anybody can handle this, it's them. Absolutely. No stranger to adversity by far, especially when you talk about teams that have been at the top of the upper echelon of the elite division for a very long time. We go back to period number two, Timu getting the opening goal for Frolanda, at least after being shut out of scoring for five games and a quarter and a third. So uh, that was great picking up the trash. And then Eki scored right after taking their first lead of the series, let alone for a long time prior to that. And I thought the tides were going to turn around, but what a good response by Villa Poika to kind of pick up his third goal of the playoffs so far and kind of stamp that out for uh, not long after Eki scored. Yeah, and what's so big about those two goals for Forlunda is you have to remember those goals were in pretty much a five-minute sequence. So they went from not having any momentum to getting two goals in about a five-minute span. Then they had the lead, and we know how good Forlunda is when they have a lead. They're dangerous to play against, especially with that defense and with Kape in net. But Atres are just one of those teams. It doesn't matter where they're down or how much they are down. They can still find a way to get back in these games with the way that they play. They put the puck on that. They don't allow a team to dominate possession because they have that red wall that they park at the blue line. So they're able to get more chances, stay in the offensive zone. And with the way they put pucks on that, it gives them that many more opportunities. And they were able to take advantage this time around. So have to credit HRS. They did a good job. They're up two to nothing because of it. And now, like you said, uh, excuse me, Nick. They have a strength on this series now. If they can win this game three, maybe Benito was on to something. Maybe he was. We talk about, uh, Tugi mentioned this in the pregame or right at the top of game number two, that Eki changed the play style a little bit about a month ago where you're no longer getting to those lower angles, looking for those deflections, tip-ins, etc. But H-Red's not afraid to get into the dirty areas. They've picked up maybe two or three Pretty pivotal goals. Uh, Nicky Dangles getting his fourth in the overtime winner here in the playoffs so far. Yeah, and it's funny that you mentioned because I remember in some of our other coverage of Rolanda, Eki was so often camped in front of the net. We got used to calling it Eki's office, essentially. He was always in front getting those tips, and just with the way the game changes, with updates, with the game evolving, that just hasn't been there as much anymore. The success rate, not there as much. So now you kind of have to adapt. You have to find other ways to score, and unfortunately for Rolanda, things have not really been there in terms of these last two games. So now you kind of wonder, 
wonder, how do you break past this defense of Adris? How do you get past a really hot goalie in phase that not only is beating you twice in this series, but beat you four times the last finals you played them as well? So obviously, for London, not going to let it get to them at all. They have been through just about every situation. They have a very calm, cool, and collected tone about them. But you kind of have to start to wonder, what do you have to do to beat these guys? For London, really going to have to hope to find answers in a pivotal game three. Yeah, they're going to need one. You don't want to go down 3-0 again and kind of face that really, really long uphill battle uh, in the next day of the finals. I know they want to get one at least under their belt here and build upon that and kind of get back into the series. But let's talk about getting back into things or coming back, rather, as not only are we going to talk about the comeback player of the year, but we're bringing back Tugi and Sin for some commentary on that. Yeah, obviously, I mean, this is going to be absolutely massive. This it, is a, a major, major award. Um, you know, the comeback player, and we might have a comeback on our hands as well in this series. I mean, we'll see. It's certainly easier <laughs> said than done. But yeah, it's one of the things I look forward to every single uh, final that we have here is the awards again to uh, put a spotlight on the players that made a season what it was. And one of the things we always like to cover, and again, here are the five finalists for the comeback player of the season. We always like to talk about, okay, who's making it back to the elite division? Some people just take a season off. Some people go down to pro division teams and take a little bit of time off or move into a depth role. These are the five, again, as voted on by the players of this edition division. These are the five players that stood out. Our five finalists. I dangled you out from ZSC Esports. Ikevaku and Teme from IQ. Vatu from Sabo Esports and Vilikun from Ahavu Gaming. And with that, let's throw it to the winner. We don't have the fake drum roll. We should have. We'll be prepared for tomorrow. The winner of Comeback <laughs> Player of the Season, Sin Sabo go two for two. Vatu winning Comeback Player of the Year. I mean, really hard to argue. Sawa was a force out there, and Vatu himself was a tremendous part of that all over the ice, not just on that offensive end, but it was an entire team effort to play defense from Sawa. They had a suffocating, uh, a suffocating trap, a very, very suffocating collapse game, and that counterattack from them was just absolutely deadly. So with that, just about ready to go for game number three. Again, the third and final game of tonight's broadcast. We will finish up the series tomorrow, regardless of how long the series happens to go. And Sin, certainly now all the pressure on Frolunda needing to win this game. Otherwise, you will need a four-game uh, comeback tomorrow, having to win four in a row against H-Reds, and I don't know if there's any team in the world that could win four in a row against H-Reds. I, I don't know. I think I've said this before in another cast. Uh, maybe just H-Reds have that capability of mm -hmm. uh, winning four games against a team like H-Reds. They just seem to be at another level here, and they're out to prove that last season was not merely a fluke, and with a two-game lead here in this series, they're looking uh, on a good path to being able to do just that. So again, game number three at the end of this broadcast. Hey, we'll get to hear from our friends, Mr. S5 Penguin. B major one more time, and an early goal. H Red strike quick. Nikki Dangles has it. One to nothing for the defending champions. Blink, and you've missed it. In fact, I almost missed it myself. What a chance, and once again, it's off of a rebound. In tight opportunity, Villapoika puts it on. Kape makes the initial save, and Nikki Dangles cleaning up the garbage in front. They are picking up where they left off. A quick goal getting into this one, and correct me if I'm wrong, but Frulunda has yet to score the first goal of any game. You are correct. What a start for H-Reds. They get the overtime winner. Nikki Dangles, golden helmet wearer, team's leading scorer, and you can see why. Continues to get better and better as the seasons go on. They double it up. King of Apes makes it two to nothing here within the first five minutes of the first period. Absolutely unbelievable play right there. What a pinch. The awareness doesn't get picked up in time from Tamu on that left hand side. We you know, I mean, in our comms, at least we can sort of hear some of the shouts coming out from them in that live setting. They are absolutely hyped right now, and you cannot blame the Matrix taking a 2-0 lead this early into the first period with a 2-0 series lead. I mean, 
they just continue to push for Linda further on the ropes, and they may not Another be Another shot! It's on the far side! Cape able to make the cover, and I think we're seeing an immediate pause from Frolunda. Sin, what do you make of this? Absolutely incredible. Atred's nearly making it three to nothing. I mean, wow. All over him. Just absolutely all over him. They are uh, take no prisoners, uh, stepping on the throats, whatever analogy that you want to come up with is just unreal right now. And that ability right there, what a pass over to King of Apes, who on that back end is able to sneak it in on the little bit of space that was there from Kafe. And he didn't quite close off that post uh, enough. And so there was space right there. And that's two quick goals here. And the situation for Ferlunda just went from bad to worse. Sin, it's one of those things where, I mean, we'll see what Ferlunda's able to do in response, but as it stands, you know, we see it not only in uh, the real-life game of hockey, but in video game form as well here now. How how the game adapts, and literally the, how the video game changes and adapts, and how the players happen to adapt to that. And it just seems now, over the past couple of EA NHL titles, the game has continued to kind of trend in a direction that really benefits the H red style as Kape makes a save there. I mean, how else do you explain yeah. just how this team has continued to get better and better? Yeah, I mean, well, there's a lot of young talent on this roster, of course. You know, FaZe, Nikki Dangle, some of the more newer guys coming in, obviously more considered veterans now as they approach their 20s. And as we see shot coming on right there, looking for that far side, big blasts in. I'll have to hold this point. H red's a swarming. I've had a point that I've wanted to make for the past five minutes now. I can finally make it. You mentioned FaZe and Nikki Dangles. Our final award at the end of this game is Rookie of the Year. Uh, both of them former Rookie of the Year winners. Just goes yeah. to show how an award like that and a spot like that, like that can catapult not only those individual players, but a team as well. I mean, just an incredible start to this game for H-Reds. And since we're less than eight minutes into it, and it already feels like Verlunda's running out of time. Yeah, that's a great point that you bring up because a two-goal lead against a team like Eight Reds can seem insurmountable at times, and oftentimes with the way they play defense, it is, especially when you get into that hole early because when you've already lost two games, you get into another hole, you almost feel like nah, it's, you're already in desperation mode, and you kind of have to be in. That's just going to feed the Eight Reds. And another shot that sneaks in! Three to nothing, Nikki Dangles second of the game. The champs running away with it here in the first period. Nikki Dangles, what again? We saw Villapoyka getting hot at the beginning of today's action. We're seeing Nikki Dangles absolutely boiling here as he gets another one off an in tight look. A beautiful toe drag to get that shot away and it finds its way in. Not even halfway through this first period. And Atreds have a 3-0 series, uh, sorry, 3-0 lead. And for Linda need a response, they need it right now. They need to stop the bleeding. I, I don't know what they do, but this Atreds team is flying. As pointed out, uh, <laughs> as pointed out by uh, one Mr. F5 Penguin here behind the scenes, that is Nikki Dangle's sixth goal of the finals already, Sin. Uh, he's the, the closest member to the trophy for Atreds, and, uh, you know, might, might be getting the, the temptation to just reach out and touch that trophy a little bit early. As Atred's not able to hold it in the attacking zone on this one. Just 12 minutes gone in the first period. And for Lunda, have a chasm to dig themselves out of at this stage. They are in the attacking zone here now. Adida did one-timer kick save there by FaZe. Great look. First great look of the game for, for Lunda. But Atreds again are right back in. Let's see what Benito can do. Down low for Nikki Dangles. They score! What a shot by Villapoika. Four to nothing for Lunda. Getting torn apart here in game three. This is just surgical precision of them getting picked apart. As you said, Atreds all over them. They're pulling them out of position with their desperation. They're counteracting any sort of aggression that they want to throw out. And Atreds are methodically just continuing 
to beat this team down and get themselves ever closer to hoisting that championship trophy once again and being the ECL's first back-to-back -back champs. Another chance there, a little bit uh, of an errant pass. Four to nothing here in the first period for Lunda. Desperate to try and get something going. One goal at a time. Needs to be the game plan for them. A good poke check breaks that one up. Again, you are watching one of the best teams, not just in Europe. Like, we are talking about this for Linda squad being one of the most prolific teams in the history of Sixes Esports for EA NHL. And Hreds have just been able to bring their game to a different level. The series is not over, but we have in the past seen a comeback as the deflection bid there doesn't go. It was a few seasons ago, Sin, that uh, I believe it was uh, Havu with a three to nothing lead for Lunda came back to force game seven before Havu ended up winning that championship. So it's not impossible, but certainly here in game three, a four to nothing deficit at the end of one. What yeah. can you even say is we'll get a look at one of numerous goals for Nicky Dangles, although you get a look there at his reaction and it's it's all smiles. Absolutely, all smiles and they are fired up and him especially and you, you can't blame him. He has been an absolute monster. I, averaging two goals per game is, that's just silly. It, it really is silly at this stage against a team like Forlunda, but here they are again. Atreds have just found another level. And, uh, you know, everything that you mentioned about Forlunda, we're seeing the beginning of that, I think, develop for Atreds. They're, they're going to start cementing themselves as one of those top teams and will be looked upon in history as one of the best teams to ever really grace the Sixes ice in the Sixes world for either continent. Doesn't matter if you're in North America or here in Europe, no matter where, this team is something else right now. And I, we're, we're witnessing history. That's really the only thing that you can say right now. As of right now, we're witnessing history. Again, series is far from over. We've seen a lot of crazy comebacks. You remember one of the times I think one of our first casts of a championship for Lunda overcame a 3-1 deficit to beat Havu in the finals. And you talked about, you know, Havu giving away a 3-0 lead later on. I mean, it's... Eh, go either way. And a shot there and a goal. Eki, just 34 seconds into the second period, gets for Lunda on the board. And we'll get another look at that one. Exactly what the doctor ordered for for Lunda. Yeah, again, it starts with one. That's all you need to do. You just get your foot in the door and keep pushing on it until, you know, you can keep compounding those gains right there. One goal, two goal, three goals. All of a sudden, H-Reds are going to start feeling the heat here. So, Linda got to continue to push, got to continue to put those pucks on net. You still have two periods. That's an early goal here in the second. A lot can happen. One goal at a time. Don't count out for Linda just yet. Here's Pleamaker. Down low in the corner, tried to shovel one on, and he did. Faye is able to make the cover. I think he wanted a rebound there for Eki in front. Absolutely did. We actually, I think I saw Eki's stick, you know, kind of making a whack at it right there as Faye, Faye was making that cover. So we're going to be seeing a lot of that coming up from Forlunda. Some jam plays, just close in tight pucks on the net opportunities. Again, ECL Elite Division action. The winter final, this best of seven. H-Reds, a 2 to nothing lead. Rebound there. Pots lost. Had to throw one on as well. Good looks for Forlunda early on. Again, the action brought to you by our friends at Wilhelm. Come on, Lockertsy. NST Hockey. It's great to work with all three of them again this season. A little loose puck recovered by Benito. Let's see how Atreds respond to giving up the first goal against in this game. Villa Poika had a great look there. As Domi back to the forehand, tries to go D to D, King of Apes. There's a goal in this one. Around the back of the net, there's Nicky Dangles. Not able to hold on to it. Eki, the goal scorer for Forlunda, his pass. Broken up, he's able to recover it. Now Loimu trying to step up, hands off for Pleamaker, and again, Villapoika all over. They do gain the line. King of Apes for Benito. Villa Poika, Nikki Dangle still hanging around. Great movement here from Atreds up until that pass. The commentator's curse alive and well. There's a puck sent in. Atreds have done a good job of controlling the tempo since allowing that first goal. Benito's between the legs move. 
A little bit off the mark, and Tamu able to take it away. Yeah, I mean, they really have. I mean, it's it's been a bit more tough for Falunda to enter the zone as I say that. You know, we see that offsides coming in. So, again, Atreids, they're not going to take any chances. They don't sit back. They, that goal gets scored against them. They want to buckle down even more. They want to score even more. It's that it's that killer mentality, the never quit that we have often talked about. We've talked about it with Falunda in, in, in seasons past and where they have that mentality. They're never, ever going to stop uh, pouring it on. And here we're seeing that from Atreids. Benito shot, rebound, handled well by Tamu. Saved by Cape. Yeah, a rocket pass into the H red zone. Loose puck recovered by Playmaker. Into the back skate, wanted to get to the forehand for that shot. It was knocked loose. What a step up that was by Loimu. An unfortunate offside call there, right as it seemed the pace was getting uh, you know bumped up to another level. Seven. 50 to go here in the second period. A 4 0 lead, now 4 1. Belunda certainly looking for an extra goal here in the final seven minutes of this period to really make that third period interesting. Yeah, I mean, that would that would be huge. Another goal, maybe even two here from Fralunda. I mean, what, is, what a stage that would set. What an opportunity for them to not go into a seemingly insurmountable deficit in this series. Playmaker can't hold on to that. Here comes Benito now for Raytred. Shot and handled well by Cape. Directed out to the corner. It's Tamu's big stretch pass for Playmaker. Let's see what he can do. Eki around the back in front. Potsloff shot on. And FaZe was able to track that one and make the stop. Yeah, not the quickest shot coming off that pass as they hit some uh, sticks in sticks in front right there. Couldn't get through cleanly, but good to see him still being able to pull the trigger on it, but just turned aside for, by FaZe. Off the draw. Potsloff going to win another one. Eki's pass, though, broken up. Great read by Atreds off of the attempted face-off play. A loose puck in that left-hand corner. Eki handled it well. Potsloff can't hold it. Tamu again, nowhere to go. Nikki dangles back to the point. King of Apes for Domi. Atreds utilizing those corners to perfection here on the cycle. Bouncing puck. Handled by Tamu. Tries to get out of trouble, and he does. And nowhere for Potsloff to go, and Eki's offside. 134 to play. A great response by Atreds to shut things down after giving up that opening goal. Yeah, and using the clock to their advantage, trying to kill as much time off as possible as we get towards that third period. The chances for Ferlunda continue to slim. What a poke at the blue line right there. I believe that was from Villapoy. Going to break that up, and it's sent all the way back in now. Final minute here of the second. Good read there by Villapoy. Going to take it away. Bounces back into the Ferlunda zone. Time for one more rush, and just mistimed at the line. 6.5 to go. And that's just a heartbreaking kind of moment there. It seems like so small in the grand scheme of things and offsides, but that's just yet another one in the long list of Ferlunda's opportunities that have gone by the wayside. They just cannot seem to get much going. Potsloff takes that one away, denying Atreds one more chance. Four to one, the final score heading in to the third period here of game number three. Again, we'll see the conclusion of this series tomorrow, no matter what the series happens to be and how long it goes. And Sin 4 for Alunda, you got 20 minutes here to battle back and try to avoid that 3 to nothing lead. Yeah, uh, they need three goals minimum, and that's no easy task against H-Reds, no easy task against FaZe, even with... You know, some of the some of the worst defense uh, that you could imagine. It, he's such a good goaltender, and you're going to need a little bit of help from Lady Luck, but more importantly, you're just going to need to find a way to get into this zone. It's such a tough, tough feeling when you feel like your destiny is not in your own hands right in there, right, right now. And that's kind of what it's got to feel like for Fralinda. They're down by three, heading into the third period against a team who was up 2-0 in the series, against a team who swept you last season in the finals and who didn't allow a whole heck of a lot of goals. And it's kind of repeating itself so far in this one as well. I mean, a few more goals have been scored for Ferlinda, yes, but it still has not been enough. Third period underway. With this puck drop and another face-off one. Let's see how this plays out. Again, almost an all-or-nothing feeling here. Here comes Playmaker, pressured, couldn't get it back as Domi was able to take that one away. 
Good hit there on the corner, but they can't maintain zone possession. Okay, a struggle there for the puck. Tamu, the big stretch pass to Pleamaker. Elects to just go with the speed. Cut back is denied. And H-Reds again take it away. Nikki Dangles, loose puck. Good hit there by Loimu, still fighting for it. Potsloff, Arecki, just nowhere to go. Nikki Dangles all over him. Potsloff can't hold that puck. Might be a few no contests uh, added to some of these builds with the way the uh, puck luck has gone in terms of pickups. And again, Loimu couldn't get it. Potsloff tried to throw one on it, went off a leg. Here comes Villapoyka. He's tripped. H Reds to the power play with a chance to seal the deal. That's a tough one from Loimu as well. That's a good position to kind of use that stick, but he just held on to it for a slight amount of time. It got too caught up in the shins, and he does take the trip right there. And you said, I mean, this is a massive, massive opportunity for H Reds and a heartbreaking moment for Fralunda. A shot and a glove save there by Cape. He plays it out dangerous and maybe showing the urgency that his team has at the moment, but you don't want to hand a team a free possession when they're already on the power play. It's Playmaker, he's gonna make a go of it from the looks of it. Tries to get it to Potsloff, and H-Reds again recover the bouncing puck. In this situation, we're gonna see Tamu hang way back. We're gonna see the three forwards out there, including Eki. He'll go up and be an extreme late man in these scenarios, most likely. So it's King of Apes here one more time. The pass over to Villapoyka. And now Domi, 15 seconds to go on the power play. Nikki Dangles. Loose puck back now for King of Apes. Defended ball by Potsloff. Pass in front. Villapoyka. Tried to wait out the defender, but another penalty is called. And a crucial mistake there. Atreds will get another two minutes as Potsloff right at the end called for the bump. Yeah, that's, that's unfortunate right there. He assumed that person was going to get the puck in. That little bump puts him back in the box. That's a fresh two minutes on the power play clock for H-Reds. A uh, costly mistake here, perhaps. The H-Reds power play go right back to work. Yeah, one of the benefits here of having a, a four-man booth, essentially, Sin, is that uh, uh, Nick and Brandon both get to make us look a little bit better. Uh, Brandon yeah. pointing out, for Lunda have only scored uh, four goals or more once in the postseason. It was game four against Feriestad, so... Certainly now, we're almost halfway through this period. It's another penalty kill. They're not doing themselves any favors. That one broken up. Great look for Nikki Dangles. And a pass again, and no, a shot on, and kicked away by Cape. Gonna try to make something happen here. Shorthanded that one off the side of the goal. Nikki Dangles having to deal with Playmaker, who sends it all the way around and out of the zone. No, Eki keeps it. But unfortunately, nowhere for Loimo to go. We are back to five on five. We are halfway through this third period. That one poked again. It was off the side of the goal. Eki takes it away. The plea maker hanging, hanging around. Not necessarily cherry picking. That shot on. Never did like the term cherry picking in hockey. It's a, it's a, you know, a fair strategy, all things considered. But it didn't work out. H-Reds do ice the puck here, though, sir. Yeah, I think I've completely uh, taken it out of my out of my vocabulary and uh, the games that we've uh, seen Fedestad play and use that, uh, you know, off a leaving the zone early. And we're seeing that a bit uh, from Playmaker here is it's just pure desperation. Uh, this, you know, this team often doesn't go for those slap pass plays, but here they are. And the pass in front somehow stays out. And now a two on one down the other way. Here's Benito knocked loose by Potsloff. Seven minutes for for London. Otherwise, it will be a 3 to nothing deficit that they have to overcome in tomorrow's final. Again, game four guaranteed. We'll follow the series for as long as is necessary. Again, upon the conclusion of this game, we again hearing from our friends Mr. F5 Penguin and B Major will have the unveiling of our rookie of the year. Here's Benito, one man to beat, and he can't hold on to it. Four and a half now. Nikki dangles in the corner, finds Villapoyka down low. Again, it was an early goal at the start of the second period. It was a four to nothing lead after 20 minutes. Four H Reds. Did one defender all the way back, just watching Playmaker. Finally, they free him up in a little bit of space. Pass in front. Eki can't get it. 
Benito for Villapoica. One man to beat. Here comes the back pressure. He'll send it into the corner. Eki. Again, just completely shut down at the blue line. How impressive have H-Red's been. His phase, a little bit dangerous there. Plays it out. Intercepted by Potsla. Final 55 seconds of game three. H-Red's nullify the icing. Holding the puck down low. Incredible to think that former multiple-time champions in Frölunda are at risk of being swept in the finals two seasons in a row. Yeah, I, it just goes, oh my goodness, there's another Here's turnover. Here's Villapoika, <laughs> tried the dragon on the rebound. Who else? Nikki Dangles shovels it home. Five to one the score, a three to nothing. Series lead for H Reds, one win away from going back to back, the first team to ever do it. I mean, this is just insane. Villapoika breaking out the kind of the behind the back uh, Deacon. Well, guess who? Nikki Dangles now being the opportunity to clean up all the trash. His seventh goal, I believe, of this series so far. This is still only the third game. And, and we're going to have a fight. It's a rarity. But here we go. Will it be a full line brawl or not? It is a plea maker taking on Nikki Dangles, the ultimate rarity that we have. Good defense by Nikki Dangles. Can't hit with that right. Good dodge. And an uppercut misses. The jersey pull for Nikki Dangles has him right where he wants him. And absolutely nothing plea maker can do. Eating overhead shots and an uppercut as well. Nikki Dangles nearly put him down. Plea maker trying to battle back here. Good right hand and Playmaker drops him. The lone victory on the day for Frolunda. But Nikki Dangles still all smiles here and why would he not be? Yeah, absolutely. It was a terrific tilt right there. Something that we don't often see here. But uh, I believe it was these two teams the last time we had a large fight. So, uh, you know, just kind of uh, <laughs> just doing what they can. Flea Maker looking for some kind of victory. Maybe getting some of his frustrations out right there as well as it's been a couple of rough matchups for him. And H-Reds maybe not done scoring. Villapoika, he does draw the call after that attempt. It'll be Loimu taking a seat for that late hit. And knowing H Redson, they're not just going to back off. They're going to look to add to this score. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we say it all the time. And again, style points coming out. The goalie pulled for H Reds here. This is, I mean, oh, they're just showing the world that they are. Martinez scores. The computer puts one past Cafe. Five hole. It's six to one. <laughs> my goodness I mean <laughs> what else can you say let's just that one let's let that one speak for itself seven seconds H reds here's king of apes jump deke doesn't go six to one almost seven right there at the end six to one your final score H reds one win away from going back to back again the conclusion of this series it will be tomorrow and sin it looks like it might just be one more game on tomorrow's cast i if it keeps going the way it's going right now it's hard to picture that you know not being the case a treads picked up exactly from where they left off because we get a nice we look, look at it yeah we, we do look, look a bit different I, right i've here. never looked better hey there yeah. we go <laughs> um as don't worry, I don't, I, it's hard to see this going any any other way. As I try to get myself back on track, that was a brilliant cut right there. Um, yeah, right. <laughs> H-Treads was everywhere, and it's what they did last season in the championship. And we, I, I kind of, you know, we, we both were kind of thinking, you know, Ferlinda won those two regular season games. They were close as heck, sure, but they were winning them. And here we are at the highest stage, and H-Treads just find that next gear that yeah. – we always believe is impossible for a team as good as they are, a team in the past as good as Forlunda has been or Havu has been. It's it, we we feel like it's impossible for them. They find it anyway, and 
Here they find themselves firmly in the driver's seat of this series, and it's shaping up very similarly to how last season went eerily. You had that one blowout, and everything else was close, one goal. Here we have that one blowout here for H-Reds, and if you're for Lunda, there's no taller task uh, than the one that you have ahead of you. So again, with that, a 3 to nothing now series lead. We'll get that updated on your screen in a second. A 3 to nothing series lead for H-Reds now. One win away, again, from being the first team to ever go back-to-back -back as Elite Division champions. We do have a little bit more here on this broadcast to set the stage for tomorrow, including our Rookie of the Year. You saw two of them in action for H-Reds today with Nikki Dangles and Faye. Who will join that lineage? We'll find out in just a few moments. A quick word from our sponsors, then all four of us will be back to wrap up the coverage here today. So stick with us. We'll be right back. That's a piece. No niin, olkaapa hyvä. Wilhelm Valu sopii kuin valettu mihin vaan. Minkä päällä lakukastike maistuu parhaalta? Ei voi tietää ellei kokeile. Kouvolan lakritsi. All right, everybody, we are back again, all four of us here. Mr. F5, Penguin above me. B Mage is over there. Over there. Reversed. There it is. And, of course, Sin for the win, as always. Boys, first and foremost, what an interesting uh, day that happened to be. Uh, the first three games of this series, and it almost seemed impossible last year for H-Reds to complete the sweep. And then, Nick, here they are, one game away from doing it again. One game away, and it's almost like in the trilogy promo I talked about Mount Rushmore. Frolunda's about to have to steep hill climb up that Mount Rushmore uh, to make their way back up top. What a what a battle they are going to have to have. And if anything like the last five minutes was, despite the scoreless second period for uh, H-Reds, they are still coming out swinging. And I think you have to. I, I think our very good friend Jay Dollar said uh, off camera in, in, our, in our broadcast room, uh, if game four was now, it might be one way, but giving an extra day might tell a different tale. And you have to keep the pressure on in order to really make that statement felt internally. At this point for Frolunda, it is 100% a mental game. I mean, Sin heading into that matchup tomorrow again. Yeah, that break could be very beneficial at the same time. I mean, I think Nick summed it up perfectly. It is a mental game at this point, knowing that here now in a final situation, Atreds have beaten them seven times in a row dating back to last season. Yeah, and that's that's really uh, kind of the crux of this whole issue for Ferlinda is that how do you put that out of your head? It is a mental, that that is the mental victory. I mean, you have to be able to somehow ignore that and take it one game at a time, one period at a time. It's so easy for us to say that, but to be on the sort of stage that they're in, to be in the situation there and with the history between these two teams, where Falunda has come from with that championship pedigree, you almost feel like the ground is crumbling from beneath your feet. And it's it's such a tough climb back up to the top, but they have to find a way. We mentioned it on the cast for so long. Now, Sin and I have had the liberty of being here for three years, just about now. We've covered six, seven seasons at this point, and we've been uh, very thankful for that. The conversation always was, it's for Lunda or Havu until those two teams decide, hey, let's break up, go our different ways, and have a new challenge. H-Red's very much putting that narrative to bed. They are one win away. Before we hear from a member of H-Red's, with that, uh, we should be good to go to unveil our Rookie of the Year winner. These were the five finalists for that particular award. Again, as I mentioned a few minutes ago, uh, we end up with FaZe and Nikki Dangles for H-Reds and Sin. These were the top five in terms of the voting. Yerska for Sawo. You have Limu for Roots. Puta King for HV71. Strumpan of Azure Gordon Hockey. And Lexa of Roots. Of course, Roots stepping into the season uh, with, again, quite a few rookies in general for their lineup. That said, with this particular award, it might just go the way everyone expects it to. I mean, it could exactly, but I think, you know, in, in the spirit of the Rookie of the Year, we're going to have to uh, send it over to the rookie on this casting team, B-Major. What do you think about this lineup? 
Man, this is tough, but I think the Tugi kind of segued perfectly into it. I mean, the two guys of Roots Gaming, Limu and Lexa, I mean, how big were they to this Roots Gaming team with the way that they came in, a team that was kind of a mystery coming in. No one really knew how or knew what to expect from them. And not only that, but they came in last minute with the disbandment of the original Sawo Esports having to earn their way in. These two guys were such a huge piece to a Roots Gaming team that was, at the end, kind of in that playoff hunt, just falling a little bit short. But I think those are the two guys that I think could really, really be looked out for and two core pieces to a Roots Gaming team that I think maybe could make a similar Sawo Esports, new Sawo Esports, that is statement next season of being a team that maybe breaks out and surprises a few people again these awards voted on by the elite division players themselves our comeback player of the year was vatu our transfer of the year was asabo's goaltender nike our rookie of the year well who else would it be yerska in a landslide walks away with rookie of the year a clean sweep of the awards for Sawo Esports here tonight, and Sin can't disagree with it. No, hard to disagree. They had such a tremendous season, and unfortunately their journey ended pretty quickly here in the playoffs, but these, again, are those regular season awards here. Yerska taking home the rookie uh, of the year, and hard to really argue. I mean, Nick, I mean, you definitely watched some games here. You probably saw him in action. How did he look? Yeah, the clean sweep for Sawo, and there's a team that really kind of came back into things and just made an impact kind of out the get. And when you have talent, it's kind of like what I said in uh, the beginning of uh, between game one and game two. When you have new styles of play come into the league, I think you have to adjust. And I've said on broadcasts I've done over the last year or so that what's happening in NHL 22, almost the meta beyond what the in-game mechanic is, is everybody expects a certain way to play. The puck goes over here, everybody moves this way. Puck goes over there, everybody moves that way. And it's the different moves that are unexpected that change what teams are going to win. And I think that's what's happening here. You're seeing that happen with the new uptake of rookies that are coming into these leagues and really causing these veteran players to have to rethink how they play their game they're having to sharpen their own skills and at that rate iron sharpens iron and everybody gets better so with that again our first three awards in the books tomorrow's broadcast we will have our top forward <laughs> defender and goaltender unveiled but for now i believe we have word of course from uh, one of the members that we uh, heard from at the start of this broadcast, the captain, captain of H Reds, Benito, is, is back, back with us. Uh, Brandon, I'll throw it over to you. Take this away. Yeah, well, uh, Benito, firstly, congratulations on the three wins here tonight. Uh, how are you guys feeling? A dominant performance going into tomorrow, up three nothing. What's the morale? Got to feel that you guys are pretty confident. Uh, I don't think uh, we played our best game today. And uh, still uh, playing three to zero, so I'm happy how things uh, ended. Absolutely, and obviously, you guys having a pretty dominant performance here through the three games. What do you feel went into that, especially against the for London team that really we knew was going to be a tough, tough series for you guys? I think maybe just uh, so clinical and not scoring chances we didn't miss many chances and then that just uh, to get the lead in I think all of the games first goal so it's always nice to get the first goal it's had our game so much easier. Uh, we just were so clinical too. All right, Bella right. Benito, thank you again for your time, man. Congratulations. Just one win away, eight dresses from being the first ECL back to back champions. Thanks again, Benito. Appreciate it. So, with that, and again, apologies for any uh, audio difficulties, of course, doing the best uh, that we can given the circumstances. One of those things where it's like, okay, hey, let's, let's put together this broadcast. It's being held in Finland. You got four uh, members here on the North American side of things. You're, it's just, it's one of those things, right? It's one of those things at the end of the day. Hopefully, again, we'll be able to hear uh, from them tomorrow. And uh, Nick, as it is, uh, we hear from Benito tomorrow could be as him being a back-to-back -back champion. 
back to back champion, first time ever. A Treads comes in, upsets the uh, Havu and Frolunda norm. It's the storyline they want to have, and I really do feel like they are hungry to have it. And uh, they're only one win away to making that a reality. Now we know that one win is not going to come without a fight. I I don't foresee the same scenario happening this season that happened last season uh, for for Lunda's loss there. So expect them to really take this one to think for a moment and to come out with uh, an answer or at least a, a couple of responses to what we saw today. I mean, Brandon, we just kind of heard from Nick in terms of what he's expecting for tomorrow as we get a look at the bracket here for what the stage is at this point. What are you thinking about what we saw today and what we are likely to see tomorrow? You know, it's tough to count out a team like Ferlunda because we've been here so many times with them throughout not just this year or last season or the season before, but for years now with this Ferlunda core, they've been in these situations where they've had their backs against the wall and the pressure has been on them, but it's tough to really have them coming back against an age reds team playing at the level that they are. I mean, you could honestly say that age reds is the best team not just in EU, but in the world right now with the way that they're playing. As good as Verlunda is, as talented as they are, as great as they are in these situations and always being able to find a way, it's going to have to be pretty storybook to play, come back, win four games in a row against an HRS team playing at the caliber that we're seeing them play. But you know, Tugi, we always say it, expect the unexpected. That'd be quite unexpected. So, hey, who knows? He might be coming here this time tomorrow and talking about a Verlunda comeback. We've never had double champions. We've never had a reverse sweep, certainly uh, in the finals. It could indeed happen. Sin, your uh, final thoughts on what we saw today here as we look to wrap up this particular broadcast and what you're kind of expecting heading into tomorrow. Um, I mean, with some of this talk about, you know, the best team in the world, I, I just want to look forward to an eventual NA and EU land to, to really figure that out. And I think we're going to see the representation of Frelunda and Atreids in that scenario if it does come to pass. But... It's yeah, tough to see for Linda making that comeback, but if any team could do it, it is also it, it's honestly them. And H Reds are flying right now, but we know that for Linda has another level that they can get to and they need to find it quickly. So with that, I mean again, who knows? Maybe the real grand final down the road is that uh ECL champion against the NACL champion. We'll see what the future in this year happens to bring with that everybody we are done here for today again we will be back tomorrow same time 1930 cet that's about 1 30 p.m eastern time for those of you on the north american side of things that happen to be joining us all four of us will be back here a champion will be crowned one way or another it is a treads with that three to nothing series lead one went away from history one went away from being a back atop of the mountain as defending champions we hope you will join us there of course you can follow mr f5 penguin at f5 penguin imagine that b major of course at the same thing sin on the youtube side of things that's in for the win productions you can follow me everywhere at tookie 24 a, a big thank you to everybody behind the scenes that helped make this happen uh, especially with some of the pre-game work there of course the rewind and such phenomenal work as always We'll see you guys tomorrow. A champion will be crowned. Sportsgamer.gg for all the info. We'll see you tomorrow.